ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kings of Combat. And here's that spinning heel kick that got around the back of the head there. It's toe to toe, and that thing oh. is coming. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live in the sporting capital of the world, Melbourne, Australia. From the Melbourne, Australia, ladies and gentlemen, the marvellous Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. My name is John Demacoli, and tonight I am joined by the wonderful Samantha Richards. Thanks so much, John. One, two. Thank you so much. going really well. Oh, good. I don't have to yell. Welcome very much, Lee, to this night's boxing action. The uh, team at Shamrock Promotions and our wonderful sponsors at UltraTune Service Centres are proud to present the 10-year anniversary show, Kings of Combat 25. Ladies and gentlemen, 12, nights, 12 fights on tonight's show. What a marvellous night it's going to be. We are live and it all starts now. In the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Serato. kilograms wearing the all black trunks tonight he makes his kings of combat pro debut and fighting out of gisborne ladies and gentlemen david senatore and across the ring his opponent fighting out of the red corner trained by ben chua out of big ben's boxing with an official weight of 66.70 kilograms wearing the camouflage boxing shorts tonight also making his pro debut and fighting out of seaford ladies and gentlemen doug nina and when the action begins your man in charge in the center of the ring mr ignatius missalides I've got to explain the rules in the change room. I want you to obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch guys now and good luck. Mark, you ready? Push your shorts down a little bit, a little bit too high. Now, you ready? You ready? Right. Round one.
Okay, first one. Don't hit the back of the head. Even when he's down, don't go for it, okay? Wait. Here we go. Serratore's been busy. Yes. Then or yes, he has. Obviously had the 15 amateur bouts, which is going to keep in good stead as the fight keeps going. But uh, Serratore has not shown any type of inexperiences. Well, well composed, Barry. Definitely very well. well composed. Oh. Very relaxed indeed for a guy that's never had that in the that's it of round number one, Kings of Combat number 25. How do we score that round, Barry? And Jordan? I think in that That's round, uh, Serratore has probably done enough there. Uh, squeezed around 10-9. Uh, looked quite composed in centre ring, uh, considering he hasn't had too much experience. Old school. Mouth guard. Here we go. Start around two. Schedule for four. Kings of Combat. Round two. The MZAC Centre brought to you by Ultratune Auto Services. A great man, Sean Buckley, watching in on this live link as well. And what we're seeing right at the moment is Serratore. Zero amateur fights, zero pro fights. He's holding his own up against none all. He, he is, but do a good right hand by Hello. Doug Nina there. Very good right hand. His territory pretty well flush. Nina's had a good sparring camp uh, for a few months. Been sparring the likes of Caleb Prozac and Terry Zuramanis, which has put him in good stead for this fight, Pete. It certainly would. It certainly would. This is scheduled for four rounds at junior middleweight in commentary. Former world champion and Hall of Famer Barry Michael along with Jordan Pellerini. Uh, good through, but oh, Doug Nina landing some big shots here. Uh, good right hand again. That's the experience showing, I reckon. But saying that, uh, David Serratore taking him well. And we're here live at the MZAC Centre in Albert Park, the Aquatic Centre, where they hold all the big basketball games. It's a full house here. Massive, massive pat on the back to Kings of Combat. They've done excellent job here with the support of Ultratune Auto Service Centres. It's a massive card we've got here, 11 fights, and <coughs> Eamon Carlos versus Wes Cap is going to be a beauty. Definitely will, and, you know, it looks sensational. The venue looks great. You know, look, Ultra Tune do a marvellous job. Their support for boxing, and Hisham, you know, Shamrock Kings of Combat 25, it's just incredible. It's a great atmosphere already for our very first fight of the evening. And this is live on Epicenter TV. Massive, massive broadcast platform now every center they get all the fights out there hey, do a terrific job adam watt and the boys a former professional fighter himself commonwealth boxing champion adam watt yeah. all these boys are swinging hard in the corner yeah hey. big right hand by day that's in a round number two and we score
some ascendancy. We're well, here round three now. The third man in the wing, ring, Ignatius Missalides, who's an experienced referee. He's also world, refereed world title fights oh, abroad. One of our leading referees indeed. Ignatius does a great job. Here we go. Schedule for four. Packed out MSAC Centre here in Elba Park, the Aquatic Centre, Kings of Combat, 10 year anniversary show. Proudly brought to you by Ultra Tune, the great man, Mr. Sean Buckley, been a terrific supporter of combat sports. Break! There we go. Certainly has. Step back, boys. Step back. Marvelous marvelous job indeed. Say break. Step back. Yep. Ignatius break. takes no nonsense. David Serratore, he's looking break. to get his Stop. first there we go. There we go. There we go. professional win. Back and there. both are having their both pro break. debuts. and. It's going to be a hard one to judge, Barry and uh, Jordan. Yeah, oh, big right hand. That was a knockdown. Yes, definitely. Great right This hand. could swing oh, the judges' scorecards. Oh, wow, that changes Six, things. Seven, eight. Okay. Douglas Nenor just four, walked four, into five, it. Let's go. He just but, walked into it there. He certainly did. But, uh, you know, David Serratore, he, he's, he's been looking for it and landed cleanly. But it'd be good to see that on replay. That was a cracker of a right hand. He seemed to have recovered timed pretty him. well, though. He timed him. He just walked right into it. He has recovered. Douglas Nenor, trained by Ben Chua. Big Ben Boxing, and they do it right, but Big Ben Boxing is a terrific trainer. Yep. Saratore yep. looking for a go, bit of a space. Go, I think he's getting his moment here, Barry. He certainly Second did, but, you know, <coughs> that, uh, that changes the whole, you know, the whole scheme of things, to be honest. Oh, look at this. He's firing back. Back Nina. Go, boys. Both hands. Go, come back, come back. Good to see Go. Nino tasted the canvas for the first time in his professional career and he's come back swinging. Yeah, in the he, same he round. hit flush. It was a really good right hand and he went down. Go. Let it go, boys. Let and, it go. You know, Ignatius jumped Go. in and you know, put the count on him, which was, was warranted for sure. But he's come back well considering. But he's Go. lost the Let round 10 8, as we know. Go. Go. That is in a round of number 10 8 three. round there to David to David Serratore, so this could be interesting now, Barry. Yeah, well, you know, even if you gave, yeah, you'd, you'd have to say that, uh, yeah. It's we gave the first two rounds to last round for sure. Nena, and now Serratore wins this one 10-8. We possibly, the winner of this last round could win the fight. Yep, now I agree. He walked back to the corner, um, Serratore, and shook his head. He wasn't happy with Massive himself. Massive right hand. We saw that. Clunk. Yeah, there it is. It was right a on a button. Perfect shot. A peach. Perfect shot. He comes back well. He did. He landed some solid body work there, Barry. He recovered well, you know, after taking such a clean, good shot. Here we go, live from Ebby Centre. On Ebby Centre at the MSAC Stadium. Packed house here in Albert Park, plush suburb of Melbourne. Close. This is the fourth and final round. Fourth okay. and final round. This is going to be interesting. I think you're going to find that Doug Neen is probably going to come in, fight on the inside and really go for this victory in this final round. Yeah, well, he's, he was having luck with his own right hand in the first couple of rounds before that, that, that knockdown, which was a good clean knockdown. But saying hey, that, Serratore, you know, showed us that he's got power to, to really hurt his opponent. And, I'm sure he'll be looking for that right hand again. As I said, he walked back to the corner at the end of round three and he wasn't happy with himself. I don't know why, but he was, he was shaking his head. For a guy who hasn't had a pro fight or an amateur fight, Serratore's really impressed me just for being there and doing what he does. He's relaxed, he switch hits, but you know, he's fighting an experienced Break, guy who's he's really Break. unleashing Break. against, uh, you know, got him Break. against the ropes, throwing some two handed shots. Oh, good right to the body there from Serratore. Break. That's Break. good. Let it go. Let it go. Yes, Serratore definitely holding what? his own. He's not a deer in the headlights tonight and uh, definitely proving oh. his worth. Yes, good up. Look, Serratore's hey, probably been hanging around gyms and, and stuff. Even though they don't have pro fights, you can tell he's been hanging around gyms and probably he knows fun. what he's doing, yeah, sparring he and stuff. He knows what he's doing. Break, let it go. But, you know, not an easy easy task for his first pro fight. Not no, big right? platform, though. Yep, yep. For and sure. he stepped up well. He certainly Break, has. Don't bunch, boys. Don't bunch. Don't bunch. Quite a snag. Yeah. <laughs> Serratore. He's nice and compact in there, but uh, right, let it go, boys. Let it go. not Neno right at the moment has been a little busier this round, I feel. Yeah, he's, he, he realises the knockdown would have changed the Both fighters swing right, them wildly. Both, oh, there's that right hand again from Serratore. He wore it well, though, that time, David Nena. Both boys right, slugging it, it out. Go, it it 15 Correct. seconds remaining. It's nearly over. It's 
This is going to be interesting. Ten seconds, boys. Ten seconds, boys. Punch yeah, it out. Definitely Punch it will, out. Barry. This is Punch a out, uh, oh, crack and first up bout for that, Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary. Undoubtedly, oh. it's been certainly a four round war. That was great. It had a bit of everything. Hard one to score. Let's leave this to the professionals, the judges. Unofficially, Barry, how would we go? How would you Look, go? Look, it could even it? be a draw. Oh, it's not brought to you by the Auto Service Centres, located yeah. over this oh, great oh, look, land. You know, also, Ultra Tires. Doug Nina really, you know, scored the more, more punches and was the more professional. But that knockdown, that's a two point. That's two points. So we could end up. rounds of action we've gone to the judges scorecards your three judges score the contest 38 37 38 37 and 39 37 declaring winner via unanimous points decision red corner Doug Nina yeah, Douglas Nina scores his first professional win but David Saratore has got the satisfaction of saying, I'll put your bum on the canvas. So yeah. he goes home with something as well, Barry. For sure, undoubtedly. Look, I thought Doug Nina deserved it because of his work rate and his experience. But, you know, saying that, David Saratore showed that he's, he's got a future. He's, he's a dangerous puncher. Just needs some experience. That's all. Percy Lanciano in the corner. I think he needs... It'd be wrapped with this performance because there's a lot you could do with David Serratore. Oh, there's a yeah, stack I mean, you could do with it. As I said, a big effort to just jump in there, you know, fight someone that's had 15 fights and land some really good shots as well, including that, you know, switch, switch hits right as hit. well, composed, heavy handed yep. Serratore. Very calm. Great effort. I definitely do. Great think, effort. I definitely do think we're going to see Serratore back on Kings of Combat 26. Yeah, undoubtedly. There's that knockdown again. That was a, that was a bomb of a right hand. Both fighters busy. Avoid unexpected situations. Get your battery checked at Ultratune. 1979. What a year. Petrol was only 33 cents a litre. The average wage was just $232. And you could pick up a brand new Kingswood for just over four grand. Since then, a lot of things have changed. The one thing's remained true. The great Ultratune promise to offer a quality service at an affordable price by experienced mechanics. Ultratune, over 32 years in the business and still going strong. And remember, trust your car with us and keep your new car warranty.
My name is Chris Sidvandenes. This is my debut fight at Kings of Combat. I used to do boxing basically to stay fit. I've played footy for a long time and that competitive level has sort of always been in me. Always been um, striving to be the best at whatever sport I'm doing, whether that be running, boxing. Marcus got me in the ring one day and started liking it. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Uh, the boys have got me moving around pretty well at the moment. I just love to compete, love to fight. I've never been one to quit, never been one to back down, especially in the ring. And you know, you might get hit a couple of times, but you get up, keep going. I'm not going there to lose, I want to go in there for the win. This fight is proudly sponsored by Toy Box Gentlemen's Club. Four by three minute rounds, boxing rules in the cruiserweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Sunil Singh at a G Box the gym with an official weight of 86.50 kilograms, wearing the black Everlast trunks with white piping. He's had three fights and fights out of the Gold Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, Bagal Singh. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, trained by Marcus Amato out of Peninsula Boxing, with an official weight of 90 kilograms even, wearing a white trunk with pink piping. Tonight, he makes his professional debut and fighting out of Frankston in Victoria, Hal Gallo, Chris Sid Van Denis. <laughs> with the extra in Japan in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Ignatius Vissalides. Alright guys, so I'm explaining the rules in the change room. I want you to buy my commands all the time, protect yourselves all the time. Catch gloves and good luck. Here we go, back for the second bout of the night. Scheduled 11 bouts, professional boxing here at the MSAC Centre. Kings of Combat, 10 year anniversary in commentary. Former world champion Barry Michael, also Jordan Pallarini. Here we've got Van Denise with the white shorts up against Singh with the black shorts. This is a cruiserweight. Four by three minute rounds. It's going to be a crack and fight, Barry. Certainly will. Uh, Chris Van Denise, uh, nicknamed the Rooster. El Gallo, the Rooster. Let's see how he goes on his uh, pro debut um, up against Bagel Singh, zero and three. But, uh, you know, Bagel Singh, we saw him get stopped by Peter Salasui in his last fight with a massive overhand right. Uh, let's see how he goes tonight. He's fighting a less experienced opponent. Whoa, big overhand right by El Gallo, the rooster there. Bengal Sin, a lot more experience than that. He fought Lucas Miller and gave Lucas Miller a real good six-round workout. So yeah, we well, know he can go the six rounds. And Lucas Miller is one of the, you know, one of the good prospects in, in Victorian boxing. Very good, very good young professional. Lovely bloke, Lucas. And uh, a singer there, by <coughs> by trade, I think he gets in there. And he's a rock and roll singer as well yep. at, no, at nightclubs. He's a, current, he's a current A and B F Australasian light heavyweight champ as well. Okay, yep, he certainly is. So yeah, Bengal but, Singh's got the form. He's certainly got the experience here. Well, as far as pro ranks is concerned, we've got Van Denise who's having his pro debut, so we'll see what he's going to be about very, very quickly. He's got the Italian flag and the Australian flag on his shorts, so he's proud of being multicultural fighter and. Uh, Italians have definitely been terrific fighters, haven't they, Barry? Oh, you know, Going back to Paul Ferrari as well, oh, you know, an Australian Ferrari's Aussie, a Hall of Famer. One of the greats, Ferrari, and you know, they the late great. produced some incredible fighters over the decades. Of course, the great Rocky right, Marciano, right. Nino right. Benvenuti. Rocky yeah. Mattioli. Rocky Mattioli, you know, great mate of mine. I sparred hundreds of rounds with Rocky. It was always hard work. 
But, uh, you know, for a guy that's having his pro debut, Van Denisi, the rooster, very calm, confident walking up here against his more experienced Indian opponent, Bagel Singh, who's based on the Gold Coast. Van Denisi's had a great training camp, eight-week camp, sparring Jason Waitley and also another fighter there by the name of Peter Salasui, who'll be on the card tonight. Yeah, as I said to you earlier, Jordan, you know, great sparring, great, you know, great training, great, great camp, so he's had the best sparring you could possibly get. This is a pretty interesting first up round. Both guys having a crack. There's been no real ascendancy so far, but I'm probably just leaning towards Van Denisi, but it's a pretty close round, Barry. It is, yeah. I think you're probably right. That jab of Van Denisi is working well. He looks the bigger of the two, doesn't he? He looks, you know, and he's, he's, he's really putting the pressure on him. He keeps working the jab, which is a real winner, and the jab's a punch that opens up everything for you. Tries that big overhand right again, and again, and that one landed. It certainly did, and it caught the attention of Singh. His yep, back was, leg kind of gave us a little bit of a wobble. That was that was probably the best punch of the round, but I, I think you're right. I think Van Denisi's, you know, on his pro de debut, is getting away with his first round, putting on constant pressure, working his left jab. You know, trained by Marcus Amato from Peninsula Boxing. Oh, you know, like, great experience corner. Good round. End of the first round, Van Denisi for mine. Jordan? Yeah, unofficially, I think Van Denisi, the front foot style has definitely sort of persuaded the judge there in the first round. See Singh in the corner. He's getting some instructions. Seems to be listening. Barry's pretty much. Yeah, he seems. He does it. seem as though he's listening well. He's telling him a lot of stuff, though. He is. <laughs> he is. You know, like it's very. You need a calm corner, and you need concise advice. You know, it's just one or two things. Round two, scheduled for four. Van Denisi with the white shorts up against Singh. Bagel Singh with the black shorts. This is a cruiserweight limit. Four rounds. Live at the MSAC Centre. Thanks. Albert Park, plush suburb. And uh, Ebby Centre's covering this, Adam Watt. But uh, we can't do it without the sponsors. Oh, Mr. Sean Buckley and Altitude. As we say that, the best. Van Denisi is very heavy-handed, Barry. He is, and he's very good up close. You, look. A lot of experience in the in obviously gym sparring this guy's never you know is his professional debut hasn't fought as an amateur i had one bout sorry at one amateur fight which happened three weeks ago so you know big step up tonight but he's doing exceptionally well here he's a good all-around athlete van denisi he's also uh, played for the peacedale panthers in the mpnfl so yeah comes with a good uh, sporting pedigree uh, that was a good counter by uh, bagel sing there it was experience circling around not being a stationary target because van denise has got a bit of bang in those fists hasn't he he has yeah he certainly heavy has. handed i'd like to see van denise get back to the jab he was working the jab really well Man, in the first point, round he needs to get back to that but open up open up bagel thing and then come then try the big overhand right which he's had a bit of look he's very good with that right to the body too van denise i like to see that the rooster throwing the big bomb to the right side the left side of uh, bagel Singh's body Certainly takes its toll. Bagel Singh, seem a little gun shy at this point in time, Peter Maniata. Look, he's circling around. He's probably trying he to have a look because they, the shots are coming heavy handed. He doesn't want to walk oh. into anything stupid. Bagel, Singh, there. Bagel Singh's had a head clash or something. Head he wants clash. to stop. He's quit. He's quit. It's all over, right? It's over. He doesn't want to go on. That was interesting. We had a head clash and Bagel Singh has cut up and he just stopped.
pretty boy. I think he, he wants to fight again. He's 22 years of age okay. now. A lot of, lot of ability. Certainly a lot of ability. On to fight number three. And fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome... Caleb Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Freddie Shard out of Seaside Boxing, with an official weight of 56.4 kilograms, wearing the aqua blue shorts with white piping. He's had 11 fights with three wins, one draw, and fighting out of Fiji, ladies and Yeah, he was he was very oh. impressive on his pro debut, but I tell you, he's fighting a guy here, Ritesh Gonda. You know, Caleb's only 20, 20, 22. This guy's 37, but he's looking at his record. He's he's as a professional, three wins, seven losses, one draw. But he has scored a couple of big knockouts. Actually, a uh, last bout, his biggest win was sorry, I looked quite a while ago, a knockout for the super flyweight super flyweight title of Fiji with a 
the second round KO. He can punch. All of his amateur wins were by knockout, so he has got power. But saying that, he's up against a tough kid in Caleb Kozak, who, as you said, is an outstanding young prospect. Look at that beautiful combo, left, left, right hand. Caleb Kozak came out of the amateur ranks. He was highly touted, oh. trained by Ben Chu, has also got series oh. of Romanas. Ben takes his time with oh. his fighters and he builds them. He told me Caleb's here for the next 10 years. Yep. And I don't doubt his word on that because uh, Ben's yeah. always right. Nice right, yeah. left. He goes to work early, Look, Kozak. Right. Looking very, very impressive in this opening minute or so of the first round. Up against a you know, much more experienced professional in Rich Eshgaunda, who, you know, maybe 37 could be at the, yeah, coming up the end of his career, but a good fight for, for Caleb Kozak, putting on the pressure, throwing good right to the body, good head shots. Certainly nice and neat at this stage. His Fijian opponent looks quite quite uh, frightened, to be honest. Caleb cutting off the ring very nice and uh, putting right. his Fijian Back. opponent seeing where, where, wherever he likes him, basically. Yeah, he's, good, got, he's, he's moving him about. He's got good. him on the back move big time. Bunda's last fight was actually over a year ago, so he hasn't been active on the boxing scene and coming back into this sort of fight against oh. a young prospect and rising star right. in Australian boxing, well, it's Step a back. difficult task. Don't Certainly is, Jordan. Okay. Certainly Box. a big task. Caleb Kozak with 44 amateur bouts to his name before he turned professional. Maybe should have gone to the Olympics. Very, very unlucky. But as a pro at only 22 years of age, big things touted. You yep. get the black book right. out, Barry. I yep. think he's a black booker, isn't For he? sure. Definitely. Right. Definitely exciting, right. exciting young prospect indeed. Okay, both winners, don't hold. Inside okay. a minute of the first oh. round. Jeff Eddy, third man in the ring, he's a no-nonsense guy. Uh, Jeff Eddy's impressed me, you know, one of their top referees, good shot there. Nice like, left hook there. Very nice left hook. British Gondo, I think his only oh. chance here is power, and he has got a bit of power based on his, his history, but uh, I think he's in for a tough night at the office indeed. Gonda is from Fiji, we mentioned before. He's also fought for the Fijian title, so... He won the Fijian title. He was a Fijian yeah. super oh. flyweight champion, so this is a big ask for a kid having his second professional fight in Caleb Kozak, but uh, big things touted, right. and yep. they want to definitely test him out in the high waters. Yep, you know, look, it's probably a good choice of opponent, someone with experience, probably at the tail end of his career, and, you know, Caleb, a young pro, he needs to be, get, to be in there with those sort of guys with that experience to learn his trade, but a couple of wild shots right on the... He's in the pro yeah. ranks, so yeah, really yeah. suit him. Retesh Gaunda from Fiji oh. in the blue corner. Certainly got a tough task in front of him here against young professional prospect Caleb Kozak in his second professional fight. Kozak cuts off the ring nicely too and stalks Beautiful. his prey. And he faints well too. Look at the... He's really good. He faints very well. Kozak very calm in centre ring. Systematically breaks down his opponent as we saw in his first fight against John Min. Yep. And Ritesh Gonda certainly on the bike. Yeah, Gonda knows. He's felt the power. He knows yeah. that uh, I'm going to get on my bike here. I'm not going to be a stationary target. And yeah. good on him. Yeah. Well, let's show him. He's showing his experience. But he's, right. as you said, right. he's felt the power Pretty in much. the opening round. And the he, he doesn't want to mix Lost. it up too much, I don't think. His only chance, I would think, Gonda, is, is a big power shot. But that's going to be easier said than done. Because Caleb Kozak is showing us he's good. He's very tight defensively. Puts his punches together right. well. Well, certainly right. very well tutored right. by Ben Chua, his trainer. Got here, trained by Freddie Chang in Fiji. Stop. And uh, Freddie's also a promoter, Second so he gets a good look at all the time out of Fiji. Off, okay? uh, you end. know, in the old days, the what? Fijians were pretty powerful, Barry. Yeah, yeah, look, there's been some good Fijian fighters over the decades. And you know, it's, it's good to see it's still happening. 
Um, Caleb throwing shots to the kidneys in, in close there. Really, you know, not scoring punches and probably a bit of a waste of energy, to be honest. Here we go. This is round two, scheduled for four. Ten-year anniversary, Kings of Combat. Oh, Magnificent effort. effort. Absolutely brilliant. Another brilliant show by Kings of Combat. And we're, uh, we're the venue, venue looks fabulous. You know, the, everything about the whole night looks sensational. Oh, beautiful. Oh, no, body That's work beautiful. there, Barry. That, that keeps you happy, the body shot. Oh, as yes. we keep saying, it's like money right. in the bank. Certainly is. Beautiful left the hook of the body there from Caleb Kozak. Ritesh Gunda has been on the boxing scene for a number of years, 17 years in fact, made his debut in 2002, Peter Maniata. He did ran in a nice left hook there, oh. and Kozak trying to tee off now, trying to get some ascendancy. Good combinations from Kozak. It's a matter of time, I think. Ritesh not moving as much now, which means he might have to wear some power shots if he's just going to stay there. Probably starting to slow down because he's certainly been on the bike. Certainly been using the ring, running around the ring backwards. Throwing wild shots, just hoping for that one big power shot. But nice right hand. He's in trouble, a bit in, in a bit of trouble here. It's just a matter of right. time, I think. The back. Caleb, the future, Kozak. Black booked early and definitely worth black booking by his performance so far. He looks really good up against experienced Fijian opponent. Yep. Good again. Very impressive. Oh, powerful shots right above us. <laughs> this won't go long if it keeps no. going. No, nah, Jeff Eddy right. having a good look here. Uh, Redesh Gaunder in a bit of, stri bit of strife. Oh, slowing the... down. Big round there for Kozak. Massive round for Kozak. <laughs> Almost a 10-8 round. That was the best round of the fight so far for Caleb Kozak. And uh, he's looking to sort of end his opponent. And uh, maybe in his third round, he'll find the knockout victory. Here we go. Brutish a little wild there. Nice body shots there from Kozak. Good left hook there. You can see the experience that Gaunt has got. You know, he's, he's you know, trying, to, trying to save himself in there. He was hurt badly there. I reckon this could be the round. He's slowing down a bit too, and the yeah. body shots are made. I mean, he was using a lot of the ring up early. He was running a marathon in there, wasn't he? That's using, up a, lot, that's using a lot of energy, Pete. Doing a marathon backwards. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon, Jordan? He was doing the marathon backwards. Uh, looked like he was in the 2006 Commonwealth Games, where the uh, MSAC was actually upholding the uh, boxing. And Luke Jackson was one of the winners in the uh, 2006 Commonwealth Games. Yep. Scheduled oh. for four rounds. This is the third round. Caleb Kozak with the white and gold trunks up against Rutush Goodair with the blue right. and white trunks. So far, it's been one-way traffic. The, the black book of Caleb Kozak has been very polished. He certainly has. But, you know, this is a good choice of opponent for Caleb Kozak. Someone with a bit of experience, you know, been around for quite a while, uh, coming to the end of his career, but, you know, been a Fijian champion and a guy with a bit of power, but he's certainly being out-punched and out-boxed at the moment. Look at the intense in Caleb Kozak's eyes. He senses blood in the water, and he's like a shark at this point in time. He sure is. He's looking to have that big bite to finish it off. Cuts the ring off well as right. well, Caleb Kozak. Back. Yeah, he's, he faints well. He sidesteps well. He's, he's got a great, great combinations. Here we go. Starting to unload now. You look at some of the featherweights on the Australian scene, you've got the likes of Jai Alexander, another boy, Luke Boyd, and also Kane Brunson, who uh, recently fought over in China. So there's some of the names maybe Kozak will come up against in the next couple of years. Oh, I think undoubtedly. Nice he, right as he here, moves up. Kozak. Sorry, Pete. Yep. Yeah, no, there's Wait. definitely fights out up. there. Don't push the head down. Right now, Rutish. Get there, though. He's in survival mode, Wait. and he's very experienced. He's rolling with the punches, Barry. He's not getting hit. He Flush. does. He, you're right. Pete, he does, you know, he knows how to roll with the right hand when he comes, he turns his shoulder and goes, you know, goes nice right. and side on, hangs on when he needs to. Yeah, you can you can see the experience, it's for sure. Pozak. Moving around, a true survivor. A survivor. Pozak hasn't stopped training since July, has been sparring the likes of Terry Zuramanis. Oh, Marks, that was nice. That's right. crisp. That, up. that was real quick. That left hook stunned him as well. Yeah, good sparring, as you said, Jordan. And, you know, good sparring, I mean, you know, you, you can't improve unless you've got quality sparring. You need that good sparring. Caleb oh. Kozak, pressure fighter in your face. He just doesn't give you a moment, does he? No. 
as Merv Williams would say, he's like a tack collector. He won't leave you alone. <laughs> right. Very well said. Right. Perfetti separates them, no nonsense referee. This is brought to you by Ultratune Auto Car it Services. If you're up there listening, Sean Buckley on the Gold Coast, you have done a magnificent job with combat sports because um, fights like this and the progression of Caleb Kozak, you just right, never know right. where they're going to go, do you, Barry? Oh, that's for sure. You know, like, Sean does a wonderful job with Ultra Tune, you know, backing <coughs> shows like this. And, Don't you hold. know, it makes it very difficult to put on top quality show shows without, you know, sponsors like Sean Buckley and Ultra Tune. And, you know, gives these guys right. a future. He does Clean a platform. And another round of Caleb Kozak for mine. Yeah, yeah undoubtedly. It's all one way traffic. I don't think we have to, you know, discuss who might get this decision if it goes another round, that's for sure. Here we go. Oh, nice little body work there from Caleb Kozak. Oh, nice little left hook, Barry. Beautiful little left hook. A couple of low ones there, a couple of low from yeah. A little bit over enthusiastic there. Young professional certainly on the way up. Retest has been a survivor though. You've got to give him credit. He's got some big shots. Yeah, he, he hasn't has. looked for the exit sign. He hasn't, you're right, he hasn't looked looked for the exit. And he certainly could. He could have said which way's Tullamarine Airport, but he yeah, hasn't. Yeah, he could have. <laughs> could have checked out, but he, he could have. He's still in there. No, he's shown plenty of ticker. Touch gloves. Turn around. Box. Last round. Kozak. Scheduled for four. Kozak keen to get into it. Wants another knockout on his record. But as you said, Pete, he's a survivor, this bloke. He certainly is. Retash started letting oh, go. He, he just and a got big shot to he just, himself. He just got hit with a bomb of a left hook. Gonda. His arm go. Right. Step really, back. really has showed his durability, the Fijian in Gonda, and I definitely do believe a lot of promoters will be on the phone to him uh, in the uh, next couple of months. Yep. Yep. He's well. He's you know he's, he certainly hasn't quit. He, oh, he dangerous. That's a right that, hand. Big overhand right. Yeah. He's, as I said, his record shows that he has got power. He won all his amateur fights by knockout. Won the. Um, PG and professional super flyweight title by knockout. So he's got power. And as Peter said a couple of times, he knows how to defend himself. But right. saying that, right. Caleb Kozak still all I over him. Well, Rutesh oh. knows he needs a knockout to win. So he's oh. going to be swinging for the fences. Yep. There's no doubt about that. He can't win this on points. No, and he's just trying those big bombs, but they're not going to land. Right. Caleb Kozak, right. too, too savvy for that indeed. Kozak showing he's defensively sound as well. Yeah. This is at the featherweight limit, and it's four by three minute rounds, and it's so far it's been a pretty entertaining type of fight. Veteran versus up and coming. Oh, good shot. He's got he's got corner in a lot of trouble. He's wobbly. Right. The back. Gondor just seems to recover though, Barry, doesn't? Yeah, he knows he's a tough cookie. Got caught with an uppercut right. there. Knows Step how back. to roll and slip Step and back. slide with punches and Stop. hang on when he's hurt. Experience. Yeah. Yep. There's a cut on the eyebrow there of oh, uh, yes. Kozak. Kozak's got a cut. I wonder that, where that was from. Oh, obviously from Stop. a head clash. Would, you know, wouldn't have been from a punch, I wouldn't think. Yeah, no, let's hope it's not a bad cut. Right no. on the corner of the eye. Not a nice ending for Caleb Kozak. He might no. have to see the doctor afterwards and get some stitches in there. Yeah. I think it's definitely, you know, it's bleeding quite, quite, but it's, I think, just looking at it from here, it's right on the outside right. of the corner the of the back. left eye, which uh, oh, it doesn't look too good, though, but he's bombing, he's bombing his opponent, both hands. Hold, break. Seems to have spurred Caleb Kozak on break. the cut. Yeah, he's, he's no doubt aware break. of the Listen, blood. He break. knows Step he's back. cut. Okay. Here we go, Caleb Kozak looking for a grandstand finish here. Ten, the third bout of the night. Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary here at the MSAC Centre. Live Work. on Ebby Centre. Adam Watt and all the boys up in Sydney will be proud as punch because it's a top platform for boxing Work. and also fighters like Caleb Kozak get, get to be streamed all around the world. Time. End of the fight, Barry. Yes. Pause it. One way traffic. 
Retes corner, puts his hands up. I think he was just happy that he survived, to be honest, because that's all he did. You know, he was in there to survive. A one-way, one-way traffic, traffic, Caleb Kozak. Unfortunately, gets that uh, cut to the corner of the eye.
division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Laos Tui out of Absolute MMA with an official weight of 60.60 kilograms wearing the white, black and red Muay Thai shorts. Five fights, three wins, two losses and fighting out of Richmond, ladies and gentlemen, Darren Gunn. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Master Jamal Hassan at the Olympic Martial Arts Centre with an official weight of 60.60 kilograms, wearing the black shorts. 12 fights, 4 wins, 3 draws, and fighting out of Laylaw, ladies and gentlemen, Badish Kilic! <laughs> and when the action begins, you're in charge in the centre of the ring, Mr. Jeff Eddy. Blue, red, touch gloves. All right, we're clear, K1 rules, okay? You listen to my instructions at all times, you protect yourself at all times, okay? Go back to your corners and I'll call you the bell, good luck. Cookie. Here Ready? we go, our first kickboxing bout of the night, Barish Kellick up against Darren Jin. This promises to be very entertaining, Barry Michaels. Certainly yeah, does. Go. Darren uh, Goon, Hello. trained by Laos Tui, a legend of uh, martial arts, 32 wins, no losses. So, you know, got a great man in his corner, Darren, up right, against Barris Killick, who's uh, five wins, four wins, uh, off, uh, five losses, three draws. Yeah. And Darren Goon, three wins, two losses. So, fight. pretty well matched fight on paper indeed. Trained by the legend, Jamal Hassan. Yep, another legend, two legends in the corners. And, the boys are right into it straight away. They are. This is three by two minute rounds. Brought to you by Ultra Tune, Kings of Combat. Live here at MSAC on Ebby Center. You get a bit of kickboxing. Just they mix in a sprinkle it in between the boxing fights and the crowd really like it too. Yeah, now it's good to see a bit of variety and uh, oh, good, good right kick from Darren Big kick. Real good right kick, head kick. Stop. This is long. Time. You all right? Jim okay? kind of got a bit of a right. kick to the head, didn't he? he got that that sort of right, sparked okay? his attention. But Jeff Eddy made there. sure he, right. he's okay. No, that's right. Here Get we go, he's a bit low. Yep. You're right. Jeff Time Eddie in. in control. Fight. Very good referee indeed. Barris Killage, a former Victorian uh, kickboxing champion. Stop. We mentioned trained by the great is. Jamal Hassan. We trained Gurkhan, Oskan, and Barish Nesev, and That's a host of other fighters. Some top names there. He looks very strong, Barish Kilik, very physically strong. Yeah, he's from Turkish descent, 26 years of age, and uh, he's a front foot fighter. Likes to be on the front yep. foot, whilst uh, Darren Gunn, uh, in the early stages, happy to be sort of sitting back and uh, sort of absorb the pressure. Yeah, true, Jordan. Good defensive work there from Kilik. Good right to the body, looking for the follow-up kick the legs or to the head but his opponent certainly got out of there as quick as he could this is brought to you by ultra tune auto car service centers we mentioned before we've got a car that needs to be serviced run it into ultra tune it is unbelievable service and safety at working class prices too so get in there Australian known company tell you what we're seeing good variety from both boys but you know good good kick good kicks hit leg leg kicks body kicks head kicks and good punching quality stuff from both fighters june with the white shorts and kill it with a black shot kill got the great jamal hassan in the corner and june right at the moment hasn't disgraced himself the first oh, round has he very, very interesting first round That's in round number one he's holding up strong the boy from singapore there in gun but for me i think Gillich has done enough with his, uh, in terms yeah. of his pressure in the leg kicks and also the punches up top yeah i think you're probably right Jordan. you know just appeared that little bit stronger a little bit more composed working at the legs but as i said we had everything in that round a bit low there Good defensive work there by Killick. Here we go, scheduled for three rounds. We're in the second round right at the moment. Right. Ring two. 
Barish Kelly up against Darren Jun from Singapore. Ooh. Barish Kelly, good, good leg kick followed by a left hook to the head. Very fast combination. Guy, oh, and there's that left hook again from Killick. It's landing time after time. Yeah, Killich looking to get on the inside and really get to work at the moment. Uh, you look at Gunn, he's probably got the height and reach, reach advantage, but can't keep Killich away from the inside, Barry. No, true, Jordan. Uh, you know, Killich putting on good pressure and landing with that left hook's been, left hand, you know, jab or hook has been really impressive and follows up with his leg kicks as well. There is a, another good leg kick for Killich. Three by two minute rounds, so they haven't got much of feeling out process. They've got to get straight into it. Yeah, got to get stuck straight into it, which they're doing. If you, if you lose the first two rounds while you're playing a lot of catch-up, you're really going to get the knockout in the final round. And yep. uh, Darren Good really needs to get to work here in his second round. Yep. Yeah, Killick taking a couple there on the back foot. Uh, Good looking more, more you know, on top here. Definitely look more confident, isn't he? Yeah, though? the second half of round two, he's having a bit, having a couple of good moments. Good, good, good leg kick. There, good leg kick. Up. Got to hold the rope. Seems cool and composed, Darren Good now in the first round. Maybe I uh, was a little bit uh, hesitant and a little bit nervous in this matchup, but in the second round, he's definitely uh, sort of yeah, grown a little bit. He's, he certainly has, especially this part of the second half of the round. 20 seconds, 25 seconds remaining. Good, good, good nice work, work there from Darren Good. He's got vicious leg kicks, Darren Good, and you can see the reddening on the sort of midsection there of Barris Killich. Yep. Killich, good, powerful headshot there. Looking for that big left hook. He just missed, just grazes the whiskers. But Darren Gunn just grazed him with it. But good, good. Yeah, look, that's that's around it. Darren Gunn, I think that's... The way we see it, the third and final round, it's up for grabs. Could go either way. Whoever wins this round big, we think will probably get the decision. Barris Killick starts strongly. Darren Gunn, though, has been very fast at finishing the rounds. Though. He definitely fights well at the end of the rounds, doesn't he, though? Well, round two was, was impressive for sure. Definitely a real good round for him. But uh, uh, Barris Killick was having, you know, good luck, good... Uh, you know, landed with some beautiful left hooks in the opening round. The second round <coughs> wasn't, you know, wasn't really his brand. It was Darren Good and came back really well. We said in the first round that Barris Killich was the sort of pressure fighter, but in that second round it turned around and the yep. Singapore man there in Darren Good really uh, was the pressure fighter and uh, Barris Killich was just happy to counter punch. Oh, there's that left hook game. again. Now he's dangerous with this left hook. Right. Killich. Barris defending well there. Yeah, Gunn has to watch out for that left hook. That's the money punch. It is the money punch. It's been a winner for him in the first couple of rounds. He's looking for it, getting his opponent against the ropes. But Gunn comes back well. Both hands and a, and a vicious left kick. And another one. Bl blocked well though by Killick. And again, defended well. Both similar ages. You've got Gunn at 25 and 26 kilos, but look at those long legs there of Gunn, really uh, firing up top with the kicks. It's quite an athlete, Gunn, but Barish has been very aggressive. It's going to be a hard fight to score here. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a see seesawing break. round. 15 seconds remaining. Both boys have had their moments this round. It will come down to this final round, the final few seconds here, but I think that Barris Killich in this final round, in terms of if in terms of his pressure, has done enough. I think so too, Jordan. 
better. I agree. Fracking fight, though, to uh, split up the card from boxing and kickboxing. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. And I'm all out of towels. Winning. Breaks down. Oh, that is terrible. Do you have a farm? No. Oh, selfie. <laughs> do these all the time. Avoid unexpected situations. Get your car serviced at Ultra Tune. Ready, Skipper? Ready, Charlie. Boat trouble? No, nope. car trouble.
Fuego, Alexander. I'm Joe Alexander, fighter king to combat September 14. I just try to stay focused and think about everything that we've been working on and training. I think my strength is my speed. Our boxing's all I've got. I don't really worry about my opponent, I just focus on my own game. I only box and just crack and see how far it really takes me. Hopefully I'll get a shot of the world title. This fight's going to end with me winning. So I'm just giving it 100% now. Kings of Combat presents bout number five. This fight is proudly sponsored by UltraTune Auto Service Centres. Eight by three minute rounds, boxing rules in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Uri Wadawada out of Capricorn Boxing Gym with an official weight of 57 kilograms even, wearing the blue aqua shorts with black piping. This man is undefeated. Three fights, three wins, one coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Santo in Vanuatu. Ladies and gentlemen, Masing Wada Wada. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Marcus Amato out of Peninsula Boxing with an official weight of 57.15 kilograms, wearing the white trunks with gold. He is undefeated. 10 fights, 10 wins, six coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Mornington by way of Burma. He is the current WBF Australian featherweight champion, Jai. Al Fuego, Alexander. When the action begins, your man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Ignatius Missalides, they'll be fighting for the ANBF Australasian title. Live back here at the MSAC Stadium, Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary, it's our first title bout of the night this is to the AMBF Australasian title between Jay Alexander the undefeated boy from Mornington up against Massing Wirrawarra who's all the way from Vanuatu he's three and zip he's at over 45 amateur bouts comes highly touted in commentary Ready. former world champion Barry Michael and Jordan Ballerini our first title fight guys yes and uh, you know the uh, uh, opponent for Fiji here undefeated three wins one loss one opponent between them which is uh, uh, Krishna Medalia who uh, Jai Alexander won a split decision over in his last bout and uh, this uh, young Fiji and actually beat him on a unanimous decision so that's the only common opponent uh, we know they've got. Warawari with the blue shorts and Jay Alexander with the white shorts he's uh, Got a good amateur record, Warawaru, and he's undefeated as a pro. He's all the way from Vanuatu, which is a nice island off France, really. It's off France, isn't it? It's close to Fiji. Yes, but uh, it is, uh, you know, owned, basically run by the French, I believe. I've never been there myself, Pete, have you? But, uh, no, I haven't. Love, I haven't. Love have you? Some stage. No, I've never been there before, but I uh, heard it's a great destination, so I might have to head that way uh, maybe in December. I remember number one betting shop used to have an agency up at Vanuatu and yes. you used to be able to get your bets offshore. You said yes pretty quick, Barry, you don't mind a bet. <laughs> yeah, 
I've pulled up, oh, Pete, to be honest. Yeah, so no, I even, was even, registered. Even though I've tipped a couple of big ones lately, I actually tipped Ruiz to cause a big upset against uh, Joshua of 40 to 1. I was actually in Macau. I should have had a bet, but I didn't. But an interesting opening round here. Joy Alexander, explosive power, I exciting prospect. Over 100 amateur fights himself. 10 wins the pro. Uh, good to see him active. Puts those body shots together beautifully. This is powerful punch punching. Up, big body shots here from oh. Jay Alexander. Saying that, Massing Marawara came back with his own impressive flurry there. Alexander putting on that early pressure. He loves that. Good jab, good stiff jab. White and gold trunks. Jay Alexander trained by Marco Somato at the Mornington Peninsula Gym. And this is the AMBF title. Adam Height and all the boys. Derek Millen watching. Big cheerio because uh, the AMBF, it's a massive organisation. It's a proud Australian-owned company. And the belts really mean something. They do. It's, 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 it's great to see. But I'll tell you, Joy Alexander, very impressive in this opening round. Let's see if he can keep this pressure on, you know, consistently throughout the bout. We know his nickname is Fuego, but uh, he's proving like the body snatcher here tonight against the Vanuatu boy in Warawara. Yeah, the body punch has been very impressive this opening round. Both fighters undefeated. This is brought to you by Ultra Tune Kings of Combat, 10-year anniversary. Great work here oh. from, at Ebby Centre too by Adam Watt. And what a terrific first AMBF Australasian featherweight title we've got in front of us because yeah. it's been a quite entertaining first round. It has very sneaky right hand from Massin Warawara there. That was a really good little right hand. It was right on the whiskers of uh, Jai Alexander. He wants to be a bit careful with that. This kid, this, uh, this, this boy from Vanuatu, he knows what he's doing. Nice counter punching. Oh, good Joe body. Alexander, good body work. Vicious body oh. shots right above us. First round Alexander for me. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. In commentary, Jordan Ballerini scheduled for eight rounds here. This is a second round. Jay Alexander, the white and gold shorts up against Warawara, who's got the blue shorts. And Warawara staying on the outside. He's from Venuatu, who's undefeated as well. Good amateur background. Look at those body. I love his body combination. <laughs> Jay Alexander, he really puts them together well. He's testing the body early of Warawara, and over the course of an eight-round title fight, well, uh, we'll see the durability of Warawara. Yeah, you know, they'd, you'd think they would certainly slow him up, but uh, saying that, as I said, one one uh, common opponent who uh, Warawara beat unanimously, and Jai in his last fight looked as though he was going to get him out of there in the first round or so, but he he uh, came back, uh, Christian Medalia, to uh, and you know hold Jai to a split decision win for for, for Jai Alexander still undefeated ten professional fights. This is scheduled for eight rounds. It's the AMBF Australasian featherweight title. It's vacant, so the winner here will have the title. Jay Alexander undefeated, Massing Warawara also undefeated. So, well matched contest here, and I'm sure the folks here inside the MSAC Centre is going to really enjoy this bout. I mean, you look at Massing Warawara, you, you know, you look at the two of them, and Jai Alexander looks the much stronger. But saying that, Massing Warawara, Warawara is taking big shots and, you know, seems to handle them really well and countering well at times. Snappy little jab looking for that right hand opening. So, body shots, I'm worried about Barry because. Alexander's landed some massive body shots. They're definitely going to yeah. take their toll as the well, fight keeps going. For sure, Pete. But as I said, he seems pretty durable, this lad. He's, he's, oh, that one hurt, I think. That was a bit low. That one, that one did hurt. That was a bit low. But he fires straight back. Massing Warawara. Warawara's last fight was October 20 against William Mal, where he got the chocolates there. So he's looking to improve his record to 4-0.
Warawara's brother's also a fighter, so is his dad, so he comes from a fighting family. Look, I'm sure he's going to put in a massive effort here tonight because the AMBF Australasian title carries a lot of weight and he's definitely going to want to go home with the title. But he's got Joe Alexander in front of him and Marco Samato out of Mornington Peninsula. He trains them well. Got a, you know, Marcus has got a good team. He certainly trains his fighters well. And Massim Warawara certainly got a tough job in front of him with Joe Alexander. But, you know, I, I, to be, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a fighter from Vanuatu. But this guy's got skill. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Look at that. He's doing some good stuff every now and then. And he's tough. He's already proved that he's tough because he's taken some big punches so far in the first two rounds here with 15 seconds remaining of round two. No, he's well composed and he, yes. he's definitely inside the battle. There's no doubt. He's not overmatched or anything. He's yep. a live opponent. Yep, he is a live opponent. Look. Nice combination from both fighters. Real good, real good round. You know, I still think Joy Alexander throwing too much heavy leather. Takes the round. How did you see that, for me, Jordan? For me, unofficially, I think 10-9 in favour of the uh, red corner there in Joel Alexander. In terms of the lethal, lethal shots, I think it's gone in favour of the pin, Peninsula boy there. Yep. Marcos Samoto in the corner of Joel Alexander. Looks nice and calm. Did Alexander take a peep at the round curl or not? Sorry? Did Joe Alexander take a peep at the round girl? Well, you wouldn't blame him, would you? Wouldn't blame him, would you? Some nice body shots in there. You I'm know, listening, coach. Pete, I've just got to say something. He's not Robinson Crusoe. No, Chris I'm listening, really coach. That means he's not on his own. No. <laughs> Look at that body shot. He's oh, some 12. big body shots. Yeah, both boys, you know, had their moments, but Joe Alexander was the, you know, the majority of those heavy shots. I think the class of Joe Alexander is starting to show here, and he's landed some big, heavy artillery early to try and take the ascendancy. This is round three, scheduled for eight. The AMBF Australasian title at stake and a high ranking for the winner. And I'm sure Adam Height and all the boys will be watching. Big cheerio. Big body shots again. Massive Warawara taking some heavy leather to the body. That's one thing Joe Alexander does. He shows variation up top and downstairs. He's got yep. already one about the WBF um, Australasian title. Now he's looking for the second one in the ANBF Australasian featherweight title. Massing Warawara, as you mentioned, Barry, he's not intimidated. He keeps no. firing back as soon as he gets hit, yep. which tells me he's going to be here for a while. Yeah, he's, he's tough. He's well conditioned and he's, he's a smart boxer. He's sniping with the jab every now and then. He, he, he tries that little right hand, which was, he landed one really good one in in the last round um yeah no he's look he's a quality opponent but saying that joy alexander look at that very strong indeed joe alexander 10 and zip as a pro mr undefeated perfect record this is a perfect opponent for him yep i, I just after this i'd like to see joy step up you know if he wins this comes through this and wins this title keep him active you know i'm sure marcus will want to keep him active in the new year as, as he steps up in the professional ranks and goes for other major titles. Yeah, you look at 2019, he, this is his second fight. In 2018, he had the three fights uh, highlighted uh, with that Bob Trigg victory. That was probably the biggest win of his win of his career against Bob Trigg, who's a former Australian bantamweight champion. Yeah, and Bob Trigg, a tough cookie indeed. He's you know, from South Australia, trained by uh, Colin Cassidy and, and the team over there, Rod. But, you know, very tough guy indeed, Bob Trigg. Here we go, scheduled for eight. It's been an interesting battle so far. A visitor from Venuatu, Massing Warawara, has good been a real live opponent. Yeah, good look, land a good little uppercut there, but the majority of the heavy, heavy scoring shots are coming from Joy Alexander. Goes to body there too, Warawaru, but Alexander not fast. Alexander's got his game plan. He's going to stalk his prey. Yep. And he's also going to be landing some solid shots when he gets the opportunity. That's over eight rounds. Hopefully he gets a stop or, you know, stop Warawara in his tracks because right at the moment... It's a pretty interesting battle, Barry. It's a really interesting battle. As I said, Warra Warra is uh, surprisingly durable. He's taken some big punches. He hasn't flinched. You know, he's taken some big head shots and body shots. He's a tough cookie. And as I said, keeps firing back with, with some quality shots every now and then. Not as consistent as Alexander, but quite impressive at times. Looking there, it is that little right hand again. He can be hit with that right hand over the top, Joy Alexander. He's, uh, he lifts his head quite a bit. I'd like to see him tuck his chin down a little bit more. But he's certainly impressive, Joy Alexander. 
expert comments from former world champion Barry Michael. Barry, also, while we've got you there, Warra Warra, how do you see him winning this fight? What's he, what's he going to have to do? Oh, look, at, at, the, at the moment, you know, with the great round, that's some really good exchanges. But Jai Alexander, just too strong at the moment. Warra Warra's got to really, you know, put, put some... If he wants to win, he's probably got to end up stopping Jai Alexander. And I think that's going to be a bit of a tough job. Um, saying that, though... Here we go, the jab and right hand from, Warra, from Jai Alexander. Look nice at body work. He's taken those body shots well, but a good little uppercut. Joe Alexander with the white and gold trestles. This is round four, scheduled for eight for the vacant AMBF Australasian featherweight title. Joe Alexander for, on our unofficial scorecards, well in front, but Massing Warra Warra taking some big shots and firing back with both hands. Uh, needs to lift his work rate if he wants to get back into it, but there he is with that sneaky right hand over the top again. He's had a bit of success with that. So far, I think it's a clean sweep. Three rounds to zero in favour of Jai Alexander. Yep. But look at Warra Warra. He's 21 years of age, and uh, he's trained by his father, Yuri Warra Warra. And uh, he's had a lot of uh, sort of amateur fights on the scene. But you look at Jai Alexander's amateur pedigree. Over 100 fights. 100 fights, And yeah. a five-time Victorian champion. Yep. Excellent pedigree. And also trained by the great Marco Samato up at Morning and Peninsula. And he's 10 and zip. He hasn't put a foot wrong in the pro ranks. And this guy, Jai Alexander, could go all the way. Oh, he's an exciting prospect, there's no doubt about that. Jai Alexander is one of our really exciting Victorian or Australian prospects. One of the marquee fighters here right at the moment, Jai Alexander. Yeah, I love his body work, Pete. I love it. You look in the featherweight division, one fighter I'd like to see is uh, Jai come up against Luke Boyd. Boyd's got a 7 and 0 record. He's 32 years of age and the current WBF champion. I think that's a good matchup, Barry Mike. Yeah, that would be a cracker. Be good to say. See, and you know, probably. As uh, Jai steps up in the new year, I think you'll see these big ones happen for him. But this this is a really good good experience fight for him against this guy, Massing Warra Warra. He's come here to win. Good little right hand from Warra Warra there. Warra Warra all the way from Fiji. Boa Venuatu, trained by his father. I mean, a fighting family here. He has not let anyone down here tonight. He's been a live opponent. And he's tough. He's, he's worn some tough. big leather. He's worn some big shots. He's really tough. And he's still composed. He's not like... No, he hasn't he panicked. doesn't look weathered. Hasn't panicked at all. And walking up there. I mean, the next question is, Joe Alexander, you know, he's sort of tried to land the big shots to get him out of there. If he's not going to get him out of there, does Joe Alexander just sort of pat along and, and keep winning every round barrier? Or does yep. he keep trying to look for the onslaught? Well, I think joe has got that killer and he wants to, he'd like to finish the fight. But um, I think you're right, Pete. You know, he's worn some big shots, Warra Warra. He's shown that he's not going out of here in a hurry. So uh, Jai needs to, you know, compose himself and box and put them together as he's doing. But, oh, good left hook from Jai Alexander. But right on the whiskers of Warra Warra, and he never batted an eyelid. He's Warra Warra has shown some big shots on inside himself, Barry. He's having a, his best round so far, Warra Warra. But tell big you left what, hook by Alexander. He's, got, he's been hit with two left hook bombs, but he's got, a, he's got good whiskers, this guy from Vanuatu. Both guys enjoying it. You can just see they love the contest. This is a great contest. It's quality boxing and punching, countering by both fighters, and this is Warra Warra's best round so far. I don't nice see. right hand from Alexander. This is what the ANBF titles are all about. Action of plenty. Oof. Great round. How did you see that round? I scored that round to Jay Alexander, but it was the best round Warra Warra's had. Yeah, he landed he, some good shots. He certainly improved that round. He landed some good counters. I think you're, right, you're on the money there, Pete. Nice right up and up there on the inside for Warra Warra. And then the overhand right there, Barry Michael. Yeah, he's good with that overhand right, Warra Warra. He's waited for that. You know, he landed it a couple of times earlier. He threw it more this round. But he was basically still out, out punched and out gunned on by Jai Alexander. Yeah, he's a craft, crafty orthodox fighter from Vanuatu. Yes. Yeah.
Asian title up for grabs, scheduled eight rounds. Round five, scheduled for eight for the vacant AMBF featherweight title. We've got Massing Warawara up against Jay Alexander, and it's been a cracking four rounds so far to date. Yep, and Alexander's well up on our unofficial scorecard. Uh, you know, into the second half of the fight, uh, Massing Warawara, if he's, you know, got any chance of winning, he really needs to start winning rounds, obviously, and putting on the pressure. But uh, it's going to be easier said than done. For me, if there was any round that Roel Warawara was probably going to win, it was probably going to be that fourth round. Yeah, he, I don't think he won it, but he did have a lot of lot of success. He landed with some good, clean shots. That right hand of his can be dangerous. But saying that, Alexander, you know, has taken him a couple flush on the chin. Of, he hasn't seen seen hurt at all. So whether he's got the power to hurt Joe Alexander's, you know, another question. The third man in the ring, Ignatius Missalidi, is one of the most experienced referees in Australia. Yeah, no, one of our best too. He doesn't take any any garbage from the fighters up there. He's he's certainly in charge, Ignatius. One thing about Joe Alexander, a trend in all his fights, he starts off oh. on the house on fire and then uh, sort of tapers off a little bit. Against the Fijian in Mudalia on April 27, he started yes. off the first two rounds, got the knockdown in the first round, but then uh, sort of struggled a little bit in the remaining six rounds. He did, but saying that, this round, round five, he's looking strong and... But, you know, he hadn't fought for a while when he fought uh, fought that Christian Medallia. Uh, this is looking boxing well here, Joe Alexander. Boxing very well. The class is starting to show, and uh, it's getting to the business end of this fight too. And Joe Alexander definitely needs that belt around his waist at the end of the night to further his career. He doesn't want to make any mistakes now at this level. No, too true. Uh, this, you know, he's got a good, live, you know, dangerous opponent here. I don't, you know, don't know if he's a bomber, Massing Warawara, with his, with, you know, don't know if he's that heavy-handed, but he's quite precise with his shots every now and then. Count as well. There's that right hand again. That caught Jai Alexander well. That was a very good Sneaky right hand. Sneaky right hand from Got our Ven Venuatu visitor, Warawara. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a class, quite a classy boxer, and he's showing his ability in this round. Spoke to Marcus Amato during the week, and he's hoping that uh, Joe Alexander might be fighting for the Australian featherweight title in December. We know that Jackson John England from Western Australia has vacated that, vacated that title and gone up to super featherweight. So maybe there's an opening there for uh, Alexander to fight for the featherweight title. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good to further his career. Yeah, he's got to make his mark in the next year or so. He's, you know, he's, he's got the got the background. He's got the big amateur experience now. He's his 11th professional fight. Undefeated still in 10 fights. And Let's he, look at Warawara first, though, so Barry. He's got to get past Warawara. Yeah, got, he, look. Oh, well, they're both swinging away, too. Quality shots from both boys. Warawara showing he's one tough cookie. He's uh, value for money, isn't yeah, he, Yeah, he's value for money, all right. Great, great matchmaking by Isham Hanna here tonight. Bringing the point from Vanuatu Warawara across. Good right drive there. Punching, you know, good right drive to... The body of uh, Alexander. Good counter there. Good good punching here. Great exchanges that round. Definitely holding his own in centering, centering the Vanuatu boy, and he's got a slingshot of a right hand, Barry Mike. Yeah, that right hand, I picked it earlier about round two. He, he's very sneaky with his right hand counter. Peter heading towards the sort of the la later stages of this title fight. Do you have um, Alexander up uh, sort of five rounds to zero? Yeah, I think I think yep. probably. But uh, he's had a couple of he's had his moments, um, Massing Warawara. But I don't think he's pinching the round. As they say in the old terminology, something's come across the desk, and it's Ultimate right. Promotions yeah. presents Ultimate Legends. Hamet Alush, Husani Dihani, Marcus Sab, Nassar Kasab, West End. At the West Hotel, End. 47 yeah. McIntyre Road, Sunshine North, October 25th. Get along there and support it. That'll be the great, that'll be a great night of fights. A good little venue, the West End uh, Markets, uh, West End Hotel there. And uh, good to see Mark Kassab getting back into it. He's an all-action fighter, Mark Kassab, and also Hussain Dahani. Some good fighters on the card for sure. Ultimate Legends, West End Hotel, October 25th. Get along. Okay, back to the action. Joe Alexander, it's getting to the pointy end of this fight, and he definitely wants the title. We'll mention Australian titles after this. 
Well, if he gets past tonight, the door's open. There's no doubt about that. But Massing, Wara Wara, our friend from Vanuatu, He's been quite entertaining tonight, and he's kept Jay Alexander very honest. He certainly has, and he's going nowhere in a hurry. He's, he's actually showing that he's still confident. He was just doing the alley, you know, throwing the, the, the Sugar Ray Leonard bolo or whatever. Um, boxing on the back move there, countering well. Taken a lot of shots, but really hasn't shown any signs of withering or, you know, going down. He's, he's a tough guy. Yeah, he has absorbed a lot of shots, but it uh, looks like he's getting stronger as the fight has gone on. Yeah, no, he's looking this, He's looking well. He's looking very good. He's a tough, as I said. Oh, there's that right hand. Jai Alexander wore another one there. Needs to watch that right hand. Can be nailed with that. Joe Alexander, very composed, though. He gets hit and he comes straight back. Yep. With good power shots. You look at some of the featherweights domestically. Uh, you, you got the likes of Luke Jackson, um, as well as another boy by the name of, uh, as well as Luke Jackson, and also Nathaniel May. Nathaniel May lost recently over in the UK, but uh, if Joe Alexander keeps winning and uh, maybe gets that Australian strap, maybe a matchup against Luke Jackson or Nathaniel well, May. Nice hey, yeah, well, Nathaniel, right hand there from Warra Warra. Yeah, as I said, he's he, he's still dangerous. This bloke, no worries. He's, he's getting better as the fight goes on, and Joe Alexander is getting hit more and more as the fight goes on. Which is not a not a great sign to be honest. But uh, yes, yeah, talking about Nathaniel May, he I've only seen him fight once. And that was a couple of years ago, and an exciting prospect indeed. Joe Alexander swinging wildly now. Yeah, he's it's by far the round of matching Warra Warra. Quite composed in centering the man from Vanuatu and going toe to toe with Joe Alexander. Joe Alexander, as we mentioned, our marquee fighter in the featherweight division, he's looking for big fights. Lands oh. some nice oh. combinations oh. there. Re receives a few. He just landed two big right hands. Toe to toe action. Big shots oh. traded by both yeah. boys. Joe Alexander hit with some big heavy right hands there, and he looked pretty looked pretty tight. Both boys looked pretty exhausted going back there. Two rounds to go. It was a seesawing sixth round there between Wairawara and Jai Alexander. We look at some of the highlights now. And Wairawara was just really happy to be on the back foot. Yeah, and, you know, look at that very confident swing in his right hand. Counter, there's that right hand. He's hit Jai Alexander with a lot of right hand. Yeah, great reflexes there from Jai Alexander. But for me, he's quite comfortably up on the scorecards. For me, I've got him probably five rounds to one up, Jai Alexander. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, George. Definitely well in front. You'd think at this stage that uh, Massim Warawara would have to win by stoppage if he wants to win. And I think that's unlikely, but saying that, he, he is dangerous with his right hand. The penultimate round, round seven, is brought to you by Kings of Combat, 10-year anniversary. Live here at the Epicentre, MSAC. And we've got Joe Alexander, the undefeated marquee fighter here for Kings of Combat, up against Massing Warawara. And it hasn't been one way sailing, but so far, so good for Joe Alexander. Yep. He's, uh, yeah, Joe's been, you know, the stronger of the two, the better, landed the majority of the power punches. Um, but saying that, Massing Warawara has, you know, weathered the storm and had his best round in the last round. He's, he's firing with both hands still. Yeah, this sort of fight is going to put him in good stead for the future. You know, he had the fight against Bordalia on April 27, and now this fight against uh, Wawarara, well, uh, there's going to be big things on the horizon if Jai Alexander can get the W here tonight. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, it, the conditioning, when you have fights like that one after another, it just becomes so much easier when you actually get in there and fight. It's, Especially it's really... make them wait too, Barry, because you don't balloon and then have to do crash yeah, true, weight true, losses true, and Peter, stuff yeah. like that. Very true, mate. You keep active. Keep active, and, but, you know, you just cannot beat the ra the ring rounds like you know regular fights joe alexander's really enjoyed it there tonight and he's shown his class he's got a great team in marco samato and, and all the boys out at mornington peninsula and this is for an ambf australasian title so it's going to carry a massive rating in the national ratings as well so um i'm sure it's going to open doors for jay alexander and his team yep you can see Joe Alexander well conditioned. He's done a few rounds with Hunter Ioani, who will be next on the card, uh, fighting another undefeated fighter in Ben Campbell. And uh, we know how hard Hunter hits. There's that right hand again. Oh, good, solid jab there from. Oh, 
Warra 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 lands with, with Warra Warra nice comes shot, up well with Barry, really solid punches from both, both boys landing big head, big clean shots. Guy Alexander not taking a backward step. He copped a couple of chopping uh, right hands moments ago, but uh, still seems to absorb them well and just yeah. looking to come forward. He loves to come forward, Guy Alexander. He does. He hasn't seen Jordan. He hadn't seen Hurd. He's been caught with a couple of good clean shots, but he comes straight back with both hands. 45 seconds remaining, round seven, on his way to a first gonna major championship. It's going to be interesting how the judges see this, whether it's going to be a complete shutout or Warra Warra have won some rounds. He could have, you know, he might have pinched the last round. You know, look, most of the round, oh, there's that right hand again. But Jai Alexander, just for every one that he lands, Warra Warra, Alexander comes back with two and three and four. Great chin, right. Joe Alexander, too. He weathers a big punch as well. Yeah, he does. He? he does. And look, I, I, you know, I think he's pretty well in front with no, no problem at all. And, but he's, he's got a durable, classy opponent in front of him here. Time, time, time. Nice finish to the round. Round seven in the bank. And how do we see that, gents? Yeah, again, I think uh, the majority of the heavier heavier leather coming from Jai Alexander, but Warra Warra having his moments with good counters, good clean shots, but uh, probably not enough. Yeah, the last three rounds. Easy action here, Warra Warra in close, trying to counter. Jai Alexander always want to offload those body shots. Yep, little left hook there, not, not a great deal of power in that one, though. It's nice and low. Well on his way to becoming a new Australasian featherweight champion for mine. Yep. Joe Alexander. Yes, me too. Oh, wild shot there from Parawara. Swinging shot. Grazed, crazy chin there with the right hand. Grazed Alexander's chin. Live here from MSAC. The eighth and final round coming up for this first championship bout of the evening. Joe Alexander looks as though he's on his way to getting the belt strapped around his waist. But it's been a, it's been a quality fight. Joe Alexander looking for the finish here up against our friend and visitor now from Vanuatu, Massing Warra Warra, who's been very good entertaining value here tonight. He's definitely had a crack and he's got good hand speed and he's very, very tough and durable. Tough, tough guy. Oh, dangerous with that right hand. But Jai rolled that one off the shoulder. It was good to see. You look at the last three rounds, he might have snuck one or two in those rounds. But yep. for me, yeah, Jai Alexander is comfortably up on the scorecards. Yep. But uh, what Warawara has to do, he really needs a knockout in his final round. He do, certainly does. And as I said a couple of rounds ago, I think it's unlikely because, uh, you know, Jai's copped a you know, few clean ones. But at no stage did he look like wobbling or being badly hurt. Both boys got good. Great pistol. right hand. Both boys got good chin. That's one thing about this business. If your chin's not real good, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, Joe Alexander copped a few right hands tonight, but seems like he's got a granite chin. Yep. And I was going to say, Barry, if your car's not good, take it to Ultra Chin. I'll yeah, get it ready and right on the road. Exactly. Great, uh, great, great, great thing that get your car to Ultra Chin. You got any drama at all? Get along and see the boys at Ultra Tune. They'll look after you. Joe Alexander having fun in this fight. He's worn some shots, but he's never been uncomfortable. No. And, um, you know, he's going to take this eight rounds to the bank, and it's going to really keep him in good stead for his next fight. Yep, yep. He just needs to move on from here and step up, which I'm sure he will, because this has been a real good fight for him, a good, you know, good seasoning fight against a tough, durable, skillful opponent. One thing Joe Alexander needs to do, he needs to stay active, and Marcus Amato has said that in December he wants that Australian title. Yep. Yeah, that'd be good. Keep him, you know, now he's got the momentum, keep it moving. Well, tonight he takes a massive step in that Australian title quest because he's going to win the vacant AMBF Australasian title, and that basically carries a massive rate, you know, a very high rating for an Australian title. Yeah, push puts him right. right in there. Yep. Inside for 45 seconds remaining, round eight. Highly entertaining fight. Massing Warra Warra. Other promoters are looking at him. You definitely wouldn't hesitate to put him on your car. Oh, you put him on for sure because, as I said, he's a showman. He's tough. He's in great condition. He's skillful. And there's that right hand again. But Guy Alexander worn a lot of right hands tonight. He'd be a good opponent in the future for Caleb Kozak. Yep, yep. That, that would be a good fight. He's only 21 years of age, Warawara, so uh, definitely got a bright future for yep. uh, Vanuatu. 
Nice left hook there from Joe Alexander, and he's looking to finish it off for the team up at Morning and Peninsula with Marco Samato. They're going to get an AMBF Australasian title in the gym pretty soon, I say, boys. What do you think? Uh, definitely, Pete. You know, big victory for Joe Alexander on our unofficial scorecard against a very valiant, skilled opponent from Vanuatu. Here we go, Joe Alexander, nice and low. Love to attack the body and crunch. He's got, he's got a wide skill set, buries his punches downstairs and uh, really sort of tries to chop up the body of his opponent. Yeah, no, great body puncher, Joe Alexander. Love to see it. Uh, block that.
Gentlemen, before we go to the next bout, can we please welcome back to ringside Katumba Latin Entertainment. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Katumba Latin Entertainment. We'll keep the action down at the table area. We have some very special guests. Samantha Richards, it's over to you. Thank you so much. I'm down here with a very familiar face. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Michael Zarafa. How are you feeling? It's a, it's a big week that it's been for you, a couple of weeks since your win against Jeff Horn. How's the week been for you and how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling amazing. It was crazy. Uh, we knew it all along. We knew that if we stuck to the game plan and went out there and, and put it all on there, we would have come over the, the W. We did. Uh, on to bigger and better now. Feeling good. Feeling good. Now, welcome to Kings of Combat, 10th anniversary, number 25. How have you enjoyed your evening here this evening so far? Yeah, it's an awesome event. It's my first time here at a Kings of Combat show. Uh, the fights are unreal. I'm um, looking forward to the main event and the semi-main event. It looks pretty good here, doesn't it, MSAC? Awesome. I've never been here before, and yeah, it's an awesome venue for, for boxing. Now, you mentioned the main event. Obviously, we've got Kappa up against E-Man. Have you got a pick for that? And, and any uh, reason why there's some E-Man fans in the house? Uh, look, I can't pick a winner. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back in E-Man for tonight. Um, it's going to be a good fight, though. Yeah, it's going to be real good. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you go enjoy the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up, Michael Zarafa. Thank you. Bringing in our next guest for this evening, Matt Sheehan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Matt, welcome. Thank you. You look a little bit nervous. You're sitting on the table with him, and I noticed that you've been sitting here the whole time and didn't even introduce yourself. Why is that? Uh, I wanted to. He's, uh, he's a champ, mate, so I've got to introduce myself to him, so he's um, a good one. Boxer that you look up to. I do. Absolutely. Now, I've heard a rumour that you're fighting on December 7th, is that correct? I am. I'm uh, back in training. I'm looking, like, really looking forward to fighting on this card. It's a great card. Um, I fought on one last year and, um, yeah, can't wait to get back and do it again. Do you know who your opponent is at the moment? I don't yet. Um, I'll talk to my team and we'll, we'll sort out, you know, we'll have some options and, and see you know, what's available. Just in the gym, training, regardless of who it's going to be? Yeah, absolutely. And feeling good? Yeah, really good. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you have a pick in the uh, main event this evening? Yeah, I'll, I like Eamon. I've fought on a couple of cards with him and no, he's an absolute legend. So. There's 
certainly brought the fans here tonight. Matt, big congratulations to you for making the next card. Enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number six on the card. Fighting out of the blue corner, Ben. Go! Sponsored by Toy Box Gentlemen's Club. Six by three minute rounds. Boxing rules in the lightweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, interesting first. Fighting out of the blue corner. Trained by Rodney Williams out of Blacktown PCYC. With an official weight of 59 kilograms even. Wearing the gold trunks with black piping. This man is undefeated. Three fights, three wins. One coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Blacktown in Sydney. Here's Ben. Ghost Campbell! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Stephen Darren Hancock at a stand-up fitness with an official weight of 61.20 kilograms, wearing the black, white, and red and blue Hunter fight shorts. This man is also undefeated. Six fights, six wins, four coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Melbourne by way of Samoa. Hunter Eone! When the action begins, the man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Ignatius Missalides. Welcome back to Kings of Combat. We're live from the MSAC Center on Ebby Center as well. Big card of boxing so far. This is brought to you by Ultra Tune Auto Car Services. The great man, Sean Buckley, always supports local boxing in commentary. We've got 
former world champion Barry Michael and Jordan Pallarini. This is looking like a real good contest. Both fighters undefeated. Hunter Uyulu up against Benjamin Campbell from New South Wales. Yeah, well, you know, in Ben uh, Ghost Campbell's corner, you've got uh, Rodney Williams, and, you know, Rodney's a great trainer. Uh, this boy, Ben the Ghost, undefeated three fights uh, up against Hunter Ione, uh, 24 years of age, undefeated in six fights, and Hunter Ione certainly looked incredibly confident as he danced his way to centre ring. Yeah, the last time we saw Hunter Ione was on Kings of Combat 24 against Daniel Beverly, and he threw those... Uh, vicious right hands to stop Beverly in the fourth round and we know he's got exceptional power at the 61 kilogram weight division but he's coming up against an undefeated fighter Ben Campbell who last won in August of 2018 and he's definitely an up and coming fighter. Ben Campbell switch hit him with the yellow shorts up against Hunter Yulu with the black shorts both guys undefeated at the lightweight limit so I'm pretty sure the winner of this fight could really fight for a title so it's a real high stakes here tonight at the MSAC Centre I hope you're enjoying it all at home on Ebby Centre and um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot of fireworks in this fight, Barry. Oh, look, you know, very exciting opening minute or so. Uh, ben, the ghost, Campbell, switch, switch hitting, fast hands, move, moving brilliantly and Hunty only walking up, looking, looking to counter. But yeah, electric fireworks in this uh, opening round indeed. Going to be a cracking fight. Ben Campbell's a slippery customer, trained under Rodney Williams out of the Blacktown PCYC, and uh, he's had uh, 26 amateur fights and a former New South Wales amateur champion. Oh, he's fast. Ulu he, trying to land some shots here, Barry. quite a showman, Ulu, isn't he? Oh, he is, but uh, Ben the Ghost is, is the ghost at the moment. He's he's making he's making Hunty only miss and countering well. He's incredibly fast. These fights are brought to you by Ultra Tune. Auto service centers. If you've got a car, take it to Ultra Tune. Don't risk anyone else with your health and safety, but Ultra Tune. And it's just like having a good trainer in the corner watching exactly what you need to do. And Hanto Yolu, he needs this win. The ghost right at the moment, he's been very evasive the first round and a well, minute and a half of the round, hasn't he? He has. He's been a ghost. He's been in and out. He's been southpaw. He's been orthodox. He's landed some very good clean counters, but his head is up very high. Uh, Hunter can get, if Hunter can get on him, he could do some damage, but he slips and slides ex extremely well. 51, 50 seconds remaining round one. An exciting opener here for this bout. This is two undefeated fighters. Six by three minute rounds to lightweight limit. Hunter Oyulu, undefeated current, really local, local hero here at Kings of Combat. Up against probably the toughest opponent to date in Benjamin Campbell from New South Wales. Yeah, he's a fan favourite, Hunter Iwani, trained down at Stand Up Fitness with Stephen Darren Hancock, uh, rising stars in the uh, sort of training ranks. But uh, Hunter Iwani, if he wins his fight, he wants the looks of uh, Gage Island, who's the Australian lightweight champion. OK, that'll be a cracking fight. Hunter Iwani starting to have some success in the end of this round here. He, he was bamboozled the first two minutes or so, but he's having some success at the end. And Ben, the ghost Campbell, got tag with quite a few shots it's still got to be the camp ghost round for my money though how did you score that yeah i think in that round uh, hunter you he missed a couple of his right hands and i thought the ghost campbell was quite happy off the back foot he landed probably the cleaner shots in that round so i'm going with the ghost campbell 10 9. here we go some heated action here both fighters firing away ayulu landing some left and right punches A little oh. wild there. Wild stuff. Antione throwing some wild shots, trying to land. Not having a lot of luck, but just towards the end of the round, he did connect with a few. With the, the first two and a half minutes, the ghost was was the ghost. He was switch hitting, landing, countering, landing good clean shots. So I think he won that first round pretty comfortably. Kings of Combat, 10 year anniversary. Well done to Kings of Combat and Ultra Tune. Live here from uh, MSAC Centre in Albert Park, the plus suburb of Albert Park, to sell our crowd. The crowd so far have really been entertained by the undercard bouts as we head to the main event tonight. Wes Kappa up against Emmanuel Carlos, the local hero for the vacant IBF Pan Pacific title. The winner of that fight will get a top 15 rating with the IBF. And that's the title you won, Barry. Yep. Yeah, quite a few years ago, mate. Uh, July the 12th, 1985, to be precise. And uh, the day I die, I'm indebted to the great Lester Ellis for giving me the opportunity to fight for a world title. I was 
denied it for quite what a few What'd you do years. after the win, Barry? Did you have a few beers or did you get home early or what'd <laughs> you do? Are you, are you kidding, Pete? I mean, uh, I didn't hardly sleep that night. I had a few hours sleep and then I was out again. I think I didn't buy a beer for about six weeks. Didn't, didn't buy one for about six weeks in Melbourne. Everyone wants to shout you when you're the winner, that's for sure. They definitely do. And Moses Oulu, he, he definitely wants to be the winner tonight. Or Hunter Oulu, as he likes to go by. He's hunting the ghost at the moment, Campbell. And uh, it's been a pretty spirited first round and a half. But Hunter's starting to catch up with him now. He's slowly landing more shots. But um, saying that, Ben Campbell, the ghost. So oh, that that was a good body shot. Ben Campbell's, you know, certainly... Certainly a classy fighter indeed, but that's the that's what Hunter only needs to do, land that right to the body to slow his opponent down and because he moves so well this lad. No wonder they call him the ghost. Yeah, Rodney Williams is trainer rates him very highly. He defeated an all island uh, national champion, two time champion in his second fight, but Hunter Yuani looking to cut off the ring and as the fight is going on, he's cutting off the ring quite nicely, Hunter Yuani, and going down to the midsection. He is, of the he ghost. is he's, I tell you he's very strong, Hunter. Very physically strong. He's heavy-handed too, Hunter yeah, Yolu. I mean, he, he walks forward and he, he takes no nonsense. He'll take a punch to give a punch. Yep, yep. No, he's def he, definitely heavy-handed, Pete. Crowd favourite. Yeah, the biggest win of his career so far, Hunter Yolu, was uh, in March of last year where he defeated a Tasmanian and Australian amateur champion in Sam Dowrin. He knocked him out in the second round. And at the moment, he's on the front foot. Hunter Yolu from Stand Up Fitness. Ben Campbell having a bit of a, a grin. The ghost slips away. I tell you, he, he's got a lot of combos that goes Campbell. Can as well there. Great fight, this. this oh, toe well. to toe stuff. Hunty only walking up relentlessly, trying to land those big bombs. The ghost slips inside, coming up. 30 seconds of round two remaining. Big punches being swapped by both boys here. This is war. Wow. Another cracking fight by Kings of Combat. Well done, Paris Productions, too, oh. for filming it for every centre. As they go toe to toe up against the ropes. And Ben Campbell hanging on there. The pressure, I think, starting to wear him down, perhaps. This guy, Huntiani, putting on so much pressure. He's puffing, he's taking a beat, and he's, he got nailed there. And again, he's in a bit of trouble coming up the end of round two. Huntiani throwing bombs from both hands. Oh, what a round, what a round. Massive round, Barry. Big oh. round there from Huntiani. Oh. The 24-year-old there has made a statement in that second round and Ben Campbell is struggling. He's swelling from the right eye and Rodney Williams seems, uh, seems worried for his trip there in the Ghost Campbell. Yeah, Ben Campbell, I don't know what he is shaking his head there. At the end of round two, obviously. Here we go. Yeah, the big right hand from Hunter. He was in trouble. Hunter missed with a lot, but he also landed with some bomb. He's very strong, very strong for a lightweight indeed. Powerful. What he's doing well tonight, he's changing up the levels and the directions nicely to the midsection and upstairs. That's lethal now. He's hitting like a light heavyweight, Barry. Yep, yep. Wow, unbelievable pressure from Hunter. And he looks extremely confident coming out for this third round. Round three. Round three. Scheduled for six at the lightweight limit. Hunter Yoli with the black shorts up against Benjamin Campbell from New South Wales. Benjamin goes by the moniker The Ghost, and he has been in and out here tonight. He has been ghostly, but Hunter Yoli's been catching up with him of late, Barry. Yes, yes. The, you know, Hunter's That's starting to slow him up, I think. You know, the first round, Ben Campbell was brilliant, and, and he's showing brilliance here again in the third round, but he's starting to get caught as well. And, he was definitely in trouble at the end of the last round. Yeah, he's got unbelievable punch power. You look at his amateur record, Hunter, with those 18 victories, he had 14 KOs. Yeah, well, that's, that says a hell of a lot. The amateurs, he goes to the body, goes to the head. Lovely vision. Oh! Big right hand! He's in trouble. Another right hand. He's in a lot of trouble now, and we've got a long time left in this round. Hunter's starting to find his range, which could spell a lot of danger for Benjamin Campbell. Yeah, Ben Campbell was definitely wobbled to his credit still fighting back moving he was gasping at the end of the second round but chopping powerful punches here from Hunter Yoni Hunter Yoni now finding his range and Benjamin Candle wearing some heavy shots another right hand another yeah right hand. He's, he's right eyes got a lump to it he's in strife he's in a lot of strife here 
Angioni's incredibly impressive with his power here. Ben Campbell taking deep breaths. Oh, oh. he's starting to load up now, Ioli. Oh. He's found his range. If he keeps going like this, I don't think it's going to go the distance. No, I don't think it's going to go the distance. I can't see that uh, Ben Campbell can keep copping this. That was low. That was low. That was low. Ignatius Missalis, the third man in the ring, taking no nonsense. Oh, loads up these shots. Ben Campbell fighting back courageously and got a lot of class and skill, but just a strong, tough cookie indeed. Hunty only walking up relentlessly, throwing bombs at another big right hand over the top. He's in a lot of trouble in his own corner. This could be the beginning of the end for oh. Campbell. Oh, he's he's like a beaten man, Ben Campbell here, holding on for dear life, Peter Maniatis. He certainly Thank is. You. Third man in the ring, Ignatius breaks him up and gives him a bit of breathing space. He walks into a right hand immediately. He does. And he just cho it's like chopping a tree down for Huntione. He's just walking through. He's, you know, he's copped everything that Ben Campbell's thrown at him, and he just keeps walking up. Bombs Campbell been exchanged by both fighters. Absolute bomb. Campbell's swinging as wow. well. This is some fight, the crowd going nuts. Both boys having their moments. They are big shots there from oh. Hunter Yoli. Oh. This is toe to toe action with oh, Kings man. of Combat. Wow, this is unbelievable. This could be round of the year. Oh. What Fuck a the... round, what a round. Got to sell our crowd to its feet. Rodney Williams extremely upset because definitely Hunter only got a couple of cheap shots after, probably after the bell. Definitely one massive right hand. But Ben Campbell, Ben the Ghost, in a lot of trouble. My goodness gracious me, what a round that was from Hunter Ioani. Here we go. Ioli started catching up with Williams. A heavy hand to Hunter Ioli. He's found his range now and he's starting to punish Williams. What about, what about the toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff? It was unbelievable. Well, he's got a lot of heart, Ben Campbell. He came fighting back towards the back end of that round. He did. He showed some... Both boys showed incredible guts and heart. Ben Campbell fighting back against with his back against the ropes right above us. Bombs being exchanged by both fighters. But saying that, Hunter Ione on top as the bell rang. Live here from the MSAC Centre. Over there. It's been a massive card of boxing, 10 year anniversary for Kings of Combat. The doctor's coming to have a look at uh, Benjamin Campbell, just having a quick look. He said it's okay. These fights are brought to you by Ultratune Auto Service Centres and a big cheerio to Sean Buckley. Spring Carnival's here, he's always got good racehorses, Mr. Andretti. And a host of others, an avid Melbourne supporter. Sean, if you're listening, big cheerio, buddy. Thanks for supporting boxing oh, here, no. grassroots hey, go, and international go. level, oh, really, because tonight's thanks. been a massive card. It's it's international level card. Some cracking fights so far, and this one is no different. This is an absolute ripper between, between two quality lightweights. Uh, you know, both boys having their moments. Ben the Ghost Campbell showing a lot of skill, evasion, switch hitting. But Hunty only just keeps walking up relentlessly and landing those bombs. And he's had he's had Campbell in quite a bit of strife. And on my the first round was definitely Campbell's, but since then it's been from one way traffic, I reckon. Yeah, I've got a two rounds to one unofficially in favour of the black trunks there in Hunter Yuani, but uh, he's chopping a tree down. He's done that yes. throughout the four rounds. And yeah. He only knows one way. He wants the knockout and he wants a big scalp oh. here in Ben Campbell. Oh man, big uh, punches. He's got he's, he's got Campbell in a lot of trouble. Hunter Yol is starting to fight. Gone, he's gone. gone. Ignatius stops the fight. And Hunter wow. doesn't stand. Wow. Man, he is a dangerous fighter, this bloke. Indeed. Seek and destroy mission from Hunter Yoli. He wow. found his range and it was the end of the fight for Benjamin Campbell. Yeah. And the end of his zero as well. Yeah. The Lord had to go. No longer under feet. We can see. Look, you know, we can see Hunter Yoli. He, he's he's jiggling and he's jiggling. He's loving it, Barry. He's certainly loving it. It was a massive victory for him and you know up against a quality opponent in uh, Ben the Ghost Campbell who was the Extremely impressive in the Big first round. Big shots here, as we see on the replay, oh. the right hand lands. Campbell just ate too many right hands at the end. Yeah, he certainly did, and 
he only loading up on Big Diamond. Look, you know, credit uh, Rodney Williams through the towel in just as Ignatius jumped in the step. And good, good to see, you know, the referee do what he did and also his trainer knowing his fighter was in strike. You know, it's always better to stop a fight one punch too soon rather than one too late. Dr. Chris Barnes was right on top of it too. He works at the uh, at the Melbourne Melbourne, the uh, hospital right there in near the Children's Hospital, the Royal Melbourne. So okay, an experienced yeah. doctor. Well, you know this guy's he wants to fight Gage Island. That'll be a, that'll be a war. He he is one very strong lightweight indeed. So he improves his record to seven and up, seven and zero with five KOs, and maybe Gage Island is on the horizon in December on Kings of Combat 26. We'll have to wait and see for this. But John Demacoli will bring us the final decision. Hunter Ioani. He's a major player in the lightweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, one minute and 12 seconds into round number four. This fight ended, declaring him in a via TKO and still undefeated, red corner, Hunter Ione. I'll grab a very quick word with Hunter. Hunter, it's a big night, a lot of fights on tonight. Very quickly, Ben Campbell, wow, what a, what a, what a tough man he is. He hit him with everything he had. Um, eventually, the fight got stopped. Uh, probably well done there by the doctors and Ignatius Misleides. How you feeling, brother? Oh, my God. What should I say? First of all, I was going to say thanks to my heavenly father. Thanks for everything you have done for me. Everything is possible. Too much Jesus Christ. I just want to say thanks. First of all, I just want to thanks to the man, man himself, Ben. You're one top. You're one top boy, brother. Keep it up. I have a lot of respect for you, brother. Keep it up. Uh, so I always want to say thanks to my team. My coach, Tim Hancock and Darren Hancock. The brother beat us this week. It's been there the day one, the, um, the training camp and stuff. Thanks to all my fans that are here today. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, and um, I just want to say thanks to, um, to all the, the, the people there that infected in cancer. I want to thank to my, to my friend Lisa. I hope you recover well in cancer and I'll, I'll do as much as I support you. All the best and, and to, all the, to all the sponsors there. They've been with me since day one. I appreciate you guys so much. And I'm, you know, I'm continuing to do my thing. I'm continuing to, to fight, because this is what I love to do. You know why? I love to be in this ring. That is me when I come to the ring. Happy man right here. I'm a happy father always. Just want to thank to Isham for the, for the big show. Thanks to all my fans and family that are here tonight. Let's go, boys! Hunter Ione, a winner in spectacular fashion in bout number six here at Kings of Combat. We'll get some music in the background when we return. We bout number seven.
send the riches. World champion. Oh my god. Have you ladies seen Francis? You know my tiger, king of the jungle. Oh. Our trouble? No. Tiger I trouble. <laughs> Avoid unexpected situations. Ultra tune roadside assistance. Get your car serviced at Ultra Tune. On to fight number seven, fighting out of the blue corner, Hector Tapa. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, David Moy Moy. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Cert out of the Bulldog team with an official weight of 119.7 zero kilograms, wearing the black trunks. One fight for one draw and fighting out of Campbelltown, New South Wales, Hector Tapa. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Andre Carlos and John Bowman out of the Beast Fight Club with an official weight of 110.80 kilograms, wearing the black trunks with red. One fight, one win. That win coming by devastating knockout, fighting out of Chelsea Heights, David Moy Moy. And when the action begins, you're batting charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Jeff Eddy. Back him up. All right, good. And listen to my instructions at all times. You protect yourself at all times, man. Okay? Good luck to both of you. Go back to your corner before you hit the bell. It's heavyweight Come boxing back. here for Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary. Live from the MZAC Centre, we've got David Moy Moy, the David to a lookalike, up against Hector Tapaluplu from Hector. New South Wales. It's going to be a cracking fight, Barry. Oh, look, this is going to be explosive. 
have heat big boys that throw big bombs and look, you know, live on Epicenter TV, my great mate Adam Watt, former world kickboxing champion and Commonwealth boxing champion, just sent me a cheerio. Epicenter taking boxing to another level around the world. So get on Epicenter and have a have a look at this this incredible card live. Kings of Combat 25. Uh, sponsored, sponsored in a big way by Ultratune, John Buckley. Absolutely fantastic. But get on Epicenter and watch the action. This is four by three minute rounds, the heavyweight limit. David Moy Moy, looking like David Tua would keep does. there. He up does. against a southpaw, yes. Hector Tapalupu, who comes from New South Wales. Hector went wild with that straight left. And oh. David Moymore, we're going to have a lot of fun with him because he definitely looks like David Tua, doesn't he? He certainly does. And David Tua, one of the, for my money, the best heavyweight ever, never to win a world title. Knocked out three heavyweight champions himself. I think he would have fight. given Mike Tyson nightmares at his best. Oh, it would have, it would have been a war. <laughs> two, two very similar fighters. But David Tua, one amazing fighter indeed. But uh, as I said, two big boys here. So don't blink for our viewers out there because with these guys, one punch and it can be good night, nurse. Yeah, you've got the orthodox fighter in Moy Moy in the southpaw there in Hector Tapa, the Tongan-born fighter. But Moy Moy, his last fight was in August of last year where he stopped John Manley in the first oh. round. Well, you know, John's... I've, I've actually done a bit of work with John. He's a good lad. He's, big boy oh, swinging away! The bombs landing. Moy Moy landing bombs with both hands. These guys oh. just won't take a backward step, Barry. Unbelievable. Hector Tapper in trouble. You would not want to be pinching their pots at a pump, Barry. No, that's I'll tell you sure. that right now. They mean business, both these guys, but more and more in trouble. Dave, sorry, uh, oh, wow. Hector Tapper in trouble. More and more on top. Third man in a ring. Eddie's going to have to have his work cut out here. Sure, to Jeff sure will. Brave man. If you're referring to these guys, but Hector Tapper in a, was in a bit of trouble, the South Four. He seemed to have weathered his way through it and just landed a very good shot. Big Stone. shots landed by both oh, fighters. Oh, man, what bombs. Oh, what an opening round. Look at this. Eddie, both boys have got wobbly legs. They're both taking their turns, but... This is going oh. to be an absolute oh. war. Oh, They're both got it right. Hector's gone. Oh, to nearly oh, stop it. Wow, wow. <laughs> Samoan moves to 2-0, Peter Matianis. David Moimoy, the David Tua look-alike. We want to see more of him, don't we? We want to see more of Moimoy, that's for sure. That was exciting stuff. How exciting was that, Pete? That was... Wow, we. That was great. Kings of... Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes and eight seconds into round number one. Your referee, Jeff Eddy, put a stop to this contest, declaring a winner via TKO, red corner, David Moy Moy. Winners are grinners. David Moy Moy with a lemon in the hair.
gets the David Tua look-alike. He gets the W tonight and a big KO victory. He certainly did. And, you know, he, he copped some big shots himself. Both both boys had their moments, but a big victory to David Moimoy. Posing with the girls, that's a great part of the night for him. Let's see how we did it. <laughs> Why not? Backs up. Tapalulu. Tapalulu was going. He landed some big shots of his own. The South Fork from New South Wales. He did. Time. He did. But uh, Moy Moy just relentless at the end of the day. He just kept walking forward. It's a big future here for Moy Moy. Yeah, well, you know, he just needs to... And look, he's got a great, 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 great team with, with him there. And I'm sure they'll get him in top shape. He could go all the way in the Australian ranks. Yeah, well, John Bowman and Andre Carlos, I'm sure, will, you know, get him in better condition. I mean, he's still carrying a little bit of weight. He works hard. He's got a big future. Great stoppage from Jeff Eddy. Tonight is Ads, known as the Corporate Godfather. Welcome to Centering, welcome to Kings of Combat. Thanks, mate. Now, Ads, you sponsored the first ever Kings of Combat, and uh, now you're back for the 10 year anniversary show. Um, why have you decided to throw your support behind the Kings of Combat brand? Yeah, look, mate, I can't believe it's been 10 years already. Um, right from day dot, first event, you know, uh, Kings of Combat founder came to me with a vision. And 10 years later, look at this, wow, what an amazing event. It is quite amazing inside the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre, mate. You're not a stranger to the boxing scene yourself. Um, what is your own uh, background in the combat sports of uh, Australia? Yeah, mate, uh, we won't talk about too, that too much, but um, I obviously box for a little bit and being in the ring isn't foreign, but um, look, my first love was sport and I've been lucky enough to transition that straight into business. So married the two together and that's where we are. Mate, you're extremely uh, passionate about your businesses. Uh, one in particular, Rookie Me. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, look, um, Rookie Me, you know, just to boast a little bit, uh, we're in athlete development, um, especially in the AFL and um, now tapping into the basketball world. We're the, known as the official talent ID partner of the AFL. We're about to be the, um, the coaching and technology partner of the AFL and we're the, what we do with a actual athletes when it comes to development. It's just about finding untraditional pathways. So, you know, hopefully Kings of Combat and uh, combat sport is the next um, thing for us. Mate, you're a very, very busy man. Definitely the corporate godfather yourself, mate. Um, you also have a company to add on to another one called Adzi Media. Um, how did they uh, get involved in tonight's show? Like, what have they done for the media impact? Yeah, as mentioned, um, you know, Kings of Combat came to us about 43 days ago. We uh, managed to do our first campaign and the analytics are through the roof so in regards to just Victoria alone there's been over 150,000 views when it comes to videos so if you've got a passion in fighting you would have seen one of our videos in the last um, four, in seven weeks so um, on top of that too you know the impressions has been over half a million impressions so yeah we're really happy with where it's going we're here to change the game when it comes to the fighters and making um, them heard and seen and everyone's got a story, so we want to tell it. It's an absolute honour and a pleasure to have you a part of Kings of Combat. The corporate godfather adds, please, ladies and gentlemen, these people are doing great things for the sport. Give them a big round of applause. 1979, what a year. Petrol was only 33 cents a litre. The average wage was just $232 and you could pick up a brand new Kingswood for just over four grand. Since then, a lot of things have changed. The one thing's remained true. The great ultra-tuned promise to offer a quality service at an affordable price by experienced mechanics. Ultra-tuned, over 32 years in the business and still going strong. And remember, trust your car with us and keep your new car warranty. Fight number eight, fighting out of the blue corner this evening. How
and his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Peter the Sniper Salisui. The name's Peter Salisui. My opponent is Jinder Singh. So the first time I started boxing was with my old man. You know, when we were kids, we used to get bullied. Uh, so I hit rock bottom, went, went in prison, and found faith in God. Because I felt like I lost everything, you know? So boxing saved my life, because it helped me stay out of trouble. So I had two fights undefeated, and two first round KOs. I'm feeling good, feeling loose. I'm heading the right way, right path, so my goal is to reach the top and be the best that I could ever be. I like to stay humble. I, I just let my body do the talking. Kings of Combat presents Bounce at number eight. This fight is proudly sponsored by Ultratune Auto Service Centres. Four round, four three minute rounds. Boxing rules in the cruiserweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Sonal Singh out of G Box at Gym, with an official weight of 89.80 kilograms, wearing the black Everlast trunks with white piping. He's had 14 fights and fights out of the Gold Coast in Queensland. Ladies and gentlemen, Harjinder Singh. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Steve and Darren Hancock at a stand-up fitness. Last night at the weigh-in, he came in at 88.90 kilograms, wearing the trunks of red, silver and black. Two fights, two wins. Them both coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Lindbrook right here in Melbourne, Peter the Sniper Salasui. When the action begins, your man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Jeffrey Eddy. I'll tell you. Hey, Blue. That's gloves. All right, you listen to my instructions at all times. You protect yourself at all times, okay? Good luck to both of you. Go back to your corner. I'll call you the bell. Cookies. Haven't we got a massive, massive fight here in front of us? Peter Salasui undefeated up against Harbour Jinder Singh. This is live from the MSAC Centre. It's also going to be on ESPN, which is a massive network. Thanks to Paris Productions. We're getting ready here for the basically pointy end of the card, guys. Yeah, we are. And Harbour Singh got a... Very tough Take to Tony, he's far off. more experienced, but uh, Peter Salasui, as we've seen in the past, only two fights, we saw him in his last fight with a massive overhand right knockout win. And there it is in the opening seconds. Jordan, what do you think? Yeah, Salasui, definitely a major player in the cruiserweight division. Steve Hancock and the team are sort of looking to, for him to maybe drop down a division into the light heavyweight ranks, but I think if, if he keeps doing what he's doing well, I think he's a major player in the cruiserweight division. Maybe a domestic champion down the line. Yep, yep. Well, he needs some experience. You know, this is he, this is his last opponent was Bagel Singh. This one's Harjinder Singh. Harjinder hasn't got a winning record, but he's got a he's got a record that says he's a durable, tough guy. So at the moment, Peter Salas, Peter the Sniper, he, having a bit of fun up there. 
This he is, does, doesn't want to be too cocky, Pete. No, he doesn't. This is four by three minute rounds at the cruiserweight limit. Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary program. Proudly brought to you by Ultratune Auto Car Services. And also this will be on ESPN as well. So great work from Paris Production and the crew to get on ESPN. But as we say that Peter Salasui, he's got the ponytail flopping around a la Costa Zoo. Yeah. He's starting to try to find his range because there's been some big raps on Look Salasui. At this. He's just doing some mucking around at the moment. I mean, got to be, I mean, you know, you, you, you can get away with that stuff some of the time. It'll bring you undone at some stage. But Hajinder Singh copping some shots at the moment in this opening round. Yeah, Hajinda's last fight was in August. Uh, he fought Mitch Kiss Kitson in a sixth rounder and he lost uh, by he, decision. He's so, gone, he's Hajinda gone. Hajinda didn't want it. He's he looked gone. away. What was going on there? This fight's going to be over. Time, David. Doctor. He's going to have a look at the doctor. Something oh, he's happened. He's got a bad cut eye. His Remember right eye's cut eye. Head clash? Right on the eyelid there, Peter. Head clash, we thought, was it, or it wasn't? The doctor. I think it was a, it was a head clash. So the doctor's Chris Barnes, Nasty cut experienced doctor. Oh, oh, he split his eye right open there. Is Chris Barnes going to let it go on? I don't think he is. He's yeah, well, wiping it. Oh, okay, it's over. That's unfortunate. No, it's, it's over. It's over. It's finished. Yeah. Oh, dear. What a pity. That was starting to warm up, Barry. It was going to look yeah. like a real good contest. Certainly was. Now, the doctor stopped it, did he? Does that make it a technical draw? Depends if it was a punch or a headbutt. What I was it? I think they've called it a head clash already. Yeah, Alan McCall's called it a head clash. He believes it's from a head clash, but we'll have to wait and see on the replays if we can identify where it's come from. We need to see the replay of that. Yeah, Peter Salasui was uh, looked like he was enjoying himself, and that's unfortunate. Here we go. Nice little uppercut there from Salasui. Yeah, Salasui very disappointed there in the corner, but uh, the stand-up fitness boys are getting behind him, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see more of him very soon, Barry Mike. Yeah, no, look, he looks like he's an exciting prospect. Very, very confident indeed. Um, it's going to be interesting when he steps up against some better quality opposition, but he certainly looks the goods in his first few pro fights, his third pro fight here. You look at some of the cruiserweights on the scene, you've got the likes of Carly Baker, Kyle Webb, Mitch Kitson, Uriah Afamasaga, who's a former Tasmanian cruiserweight champion, and Gary Brown. Maybe these are some of the guys that Salasui could come up against in the next couple of months to really sort of uh, progress his career. Yeah, undoubtedly, Jordan. He could he could step in against uh, those guys. Be, it'd be good, be good to uh, good to see him step up, step up his next fight because he's certainly an exciting prospect. So this was his third fight of the career. He's probably massive cut over the eye. We could see it at slice right over the eyelid. into the very first round. Your Dr. Chris Barnes put a stop to this contest regarding a cut. Your winner via TKO and still undefeated, red corner, Peter, the Sniper Salasui. Salasui, fantastic yes. effort. It was ruled a punch. It was ruled a punch. That, and that's... we saw it anyway at the end of the replay. He caught him. It was a left hook. Sliced his eye. Well, Here was... we go. That's where it could have happened. Maybe. Let's have a look. Back to this. Ben Coke is hunting to sing here tonight. Happy ring for action. The boys at Santa Fe is having a big night. How do you think the fight went? How do you think the fight went? And how you doing? With all his guidance, I wouldn't be standing right here today. To all glory to God. Um, second, I want to thank my Hancock brothers. 
for being my guiding light and encouraging me and making me who I am today. Having you guys as my coaches, man, made me realize what I need to do to be successful, not only in sports, but also in life. Um, also, my dad. Now, I learned so much from my dad. Um, took me into boxing when I was a kid, along with my three brothers, and he yeah, basically taught us everything that we know now. Um, shout out to Sham, my Shamrock, my manager, my family, my beautiful girlfriend, 10 years. Yeah, baby. Um, to all my sponsors, Fandom Australia, Flexi Box Street, South Australia, and um, South Australia, oh, and uh, Sports Safe Australia. And um, all strength and calm, yeah, baby. Um, uh, happy birthday, Kareem, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your victor here tonight, Peter the Sniper, Salah Sui, an emphatic victory. Um, congratulations to Peter. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for attending the 10 year anniversary show. Um, I have the pleasure of uh, managing Peter's career. He's a bit frustrated at times, but it's step by step and he's been very accommodating. He does hit hard. Sometimes you cut people open, bro, and they need to stop the fight. So we're getting there, okay? You just keep training. Um, we're gonna get you down to light heavyweight moving forward. I appreciate everything the boys have done. So we will get you another fight next month and then December 7th here, okay? So thank you. Um, once again, I'd like to thank everyone that's attended. Um, uh, I'm lost for words, 10 years has gone like a flash. We've had our ups and downs, the shows have kept me grounded. There's so many old faces here that I really appreciate and thank for coming. Um, I'd like to thank all the sponsors over all the years that have got Kings of Combat to where it is. A uh, special friend of mine, Sean Buckley, who's very passionate about combat sports and especially boxing. And then when he thought that I wasn't gonna have TV, he started throwing these ridiculous numbers about going to a TV station. We still have TV. I'd like to thank Paris. We're negotiating with a couple of stations. Sean's fighting hard to get shows like this on free-to-air TV, like Channel 7, 10 and 9, and we will get there. We can't do it without all your support, so I really appreciate every single one of you that attend. So have a great night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Unexpected situations. Get your car serviced at Ultra Gym. Ready, Skipper? Ready, Charlie. Boat trouble? Nope. Car trouble. assistance avoid unexpected situations boxing champion Hasem Abdullah Hasem please join us at the lights there with Samantha Richards Hasem Abdullah ladies and gentlemen world kickboxing champion he's making his way over ladies and gentlemen big round of applause for Hasem the current world kickboxing champion hello thank you for joining us hello how are you Good, are you enjoying this evening? King of Combat 25, 10 years. It's been a big 10 years. How are you enjoying this evening's event? I'm loving the event. I've actually fought on the first Kings of Combat, so I can't believe it's been 10 years already. Now, I've heard a little rumor that you might be transitioning to boxing in 2020. Can you confirm or deny? Um, yeah, we're gonna do it. So, fingers crossed that everything just keeps going the way it's going, coming back from injuries. So, but yeah, hopefully 2020, 
move into boxing, see what it's got to offer for us. Brilliant, big year for you, that's pretty exciting. Now, have you uh, had a look at the main card? We've got Kappa and E-Man coming up. Have you got any thoughts ahead for that fight? Um, look, I've got another good mate of mine that uh, fights out of the, with E-Man's camp, so I'm going for E-Man for it, obviously. But yes, yeah, so fingers crossed it's going to be a good fight either way, I reckon. Should be a good fight. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the evening and all the best for 2020. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Heyman. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number nine on the card, fighting out of the blue corner. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Razor Ray Dimashki. Ray Dimashki, six fights for five wins, five knockouts, one draw. The camp's been going really well so far. There's a strong love between me and fighting. It sort of keeps me grounded. The supporters, they come, they want to watch you put on a show and watch you what you do best, whether knock someone out or get knocked out. There's a lot of people out there that want to see me get knocked out because I've been knocking everyone out. I mean, he's quite slick, he's versatile, and he's very responsive and snappy. He's built well and he hits quite hard. So I think it's a good challenge for me. Um, I'm predicting, just like all my other fights, it'll be a knockout. Let's see, let's see how we go. Kings of Combat presents bout number nine. This fight is proudly sponsored by UltraTune Auto Service Centres. Six by three minute rounds, boxing rules in the heavyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Anna Dip out of Kings of the Ring of Boxing with an official weight of 92.25 kilograms, wearing these shorts of red and green. He's had two fights and fights at the Patiala in India. Ladies and gentlemen, Parminder Singh.
And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Andre Carlos, John Bowman, and the team out of the Beast Fight Club with an official weight of 94.45 kilograms. Wearing the black and red shorts with green. He is undefeated. Seven fights, six wins, one draw. Six wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Karim in Victoria. He is the former ANBF Victorian Regional Champion. He is Razor Ray Dimashki. <laughs> when the action begins, you manage charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Jeff Eddy. He won the Victorian Regional Cruiserweight title last time out against Dave Cannon. And he's got extensive power with his six KOs and his six victories. But he's coming up against a tricky southpaw in Paminda Singh, who has fought over in the Indian Super Boxing League in 2017. Yeah, Paminda came out in the southpaw stance, which, as you said, he's a southpaw, Jordan, and, you know, unloaded with the left hand. You know, so he's here to fight. So Ray Damachki, Razor, Razor Damachki could be up against a tough cookie here. Ray Damaski, as we mentioned, he's already got a Victorian regional title in the bank. He's looking for bigger shots. He's trained by John Bowman. And I've also got Emmanuel Carlos fighting for the IBF Pan Pacific title in the main event. But Paraminda Singh, he's fought over in India. He's well credentialed. He's a Southpaw. And we, fought him, we saw him fight Silla. And he, he was ahead on points against Silla before he was stopped late in the fight. Yeah. So he's no walk in the park type of fight. He was a live opponent. Yep. And he also fights MMA as well. Yeah, well, he had 40 amateur fights for 30 wins as well. So, and uh, he's one and one as a pro with one KO. So Paminda Singh, Southpaw with the green shorts, up against Ray Razor Damachki. Yeah, Pete, you mentioned the MMA. He's had uh, sort of six and four record in the MMA ranks, but uh, now he's on the boxing scene, and I think he's a tricky customer for any sort of cruiserweight. Yeah, just feeling with his right hand throws. He's got some power in the left, you can see. But at that's, this stage, Ray Damachki not bothered one little bit. He flew in Tuesday as well for a Saturday fight. So he's been here quite a while. And he's uh, acclimatised from India. Bit of rough rough stuff from both boys up close there. It's, uh, oh, good body shot there from uh, Paminda Singh. What Paminda will look to do against the orthodox fighter. Loves to throw that sort of left hand down the middle and also has a, a beautiful left hook that he possesses. Yeah, he's quite tricky, the, the Indian boxer. He's, he's certainly no walk in the park for Damachki. It's going to be a tough fight. Paminda Singh definitely the best so far equipped out of all the Indian fighters we've seen here tonight. He looks quite stylish, balanced, and he definitely looks like he knows what he's doing. He does, Peter. Oh! Big left hand! Very good. Paminda Singh! Yes. Good left hand counter. The match key took it well. Comes back, throws a big right to the body, but deflected well by Singh. One thing about Ray, he likes to uh, sort of fire that right hand. That's his money punch. It's knocked out pretty much uh, all six opponents he's faced. But against Paminda Singh, I think he's going to be too smart for that tonight. Well, that's, you know, the right hand is the shot against the southpaw. You know, as they throw their right, right hand, you know, you, as an orthodox fighter, you throw your right hand straight down the middle and that's the punch that uh, Damachki, it's his power, it's his money punch, and he's looking for it now. But as you said, uh, Jordan, he could be a little bit too slick for that, come in to sing. Ray Damachki, undefeated. Really one of the golden boys of Kings of Combat. And it was a torrid first round. He, both fighters landed big shots, Barry. They did, they really did. They both had their moments. Pretty even round, to be honest. I'm, 
probably didn't really think too much which way I'd score it, but uh, Damaski walked up a lot, but uh, maybe maybe it might have gone to Faminda Singh, I reckon. Hey, did you score at Jordan? Yeah, I think Ray Damaski walked forward, but the, in terms of sort of the cleaner shots landed, I think it's gone in favour of the blue corner there in good Faminda Singh from India. Nice good. body work. Excellent body work, and he did have one, that one there. That's the that's a punch Jolted the head back. Yeah, that definitely got him the round. Look at that, they were big shots. No, good round for... I mean to think. Great chin there from uh, Ray Dameshi because he walked into a big shot. He, he didn't buckle. So that's great credit. He's got John Bowman in the corner. They're working overtime on instructions because fighting a southpaw, that's very hard, isn't it, Barry, when well, you fight southpaw? When it's just that poor body punches and it looks you, quite a complete fighter. If you don't know how to fight a southpaw, they're a nightmare. Um, I only ever lost to three Australians in my career and they were all all Southpaws. Jeff but, uh, Malcolm was one of them. Jeff was one of them. I never the fought flash. Jeff in a rematch or Billy Moella, but I fought Jimmy Brown. Knocked him out in the 15th round of the last fight we fought. Here we go. Ray Gomeshi trying to get some ascendancy here. Up against Paraminda Singh. Paraminda Singh here to fight. He's, uh, he's he's calm. He's cool. He's ticking his punches. Damachki looking for the big bomb. He's definitely the classiest out of all the Indian Singhs here tonight. He's definitely got better moves and he's a better level fighter you can see that straight away yeah yeah he's uh, as i said he's, he's waiting for that left hand shot of his look he's lining it up he's dangerous with this left hand we, we, we saw it in the first round he hit the match with a couple of good left hands Wait, step back. the razor needs to be careful here he will, could walk onto a left hand bomb he's looking for his own right hand bomb which is the right but, shot against the south four but this guy's pretty pretty slick he knows his way around the ring Barry, when you want to land that right hand, let's be quiet. You've got to come in with a jab, and it's got to be a forceful jab. Get him backwards. Well, it's no use walking up, is it? Pete, you know, against the south four, you know, you wait really, to be honest with you, like Kochazu was the best exponent of a wait for the right, their right hand. Good that right got, hand landed yeah. from Dometsky. And that's that's what I'm saying. He, you shoot it straight down the middle when they actually go to throw their right hand. And he did it well there. He had Singh in a bit of trouble there. I think he buckled at the knees. Best punch of the fight. Yeah, halfway through the round, round two, Damachki come back, coming back well here. Good right drive the body from Damachki. And another right hand of the head. Good work from Damachki here, coming back well this round. Yeah, much better round for Damachki than yes. the Lebanese boy so far. But, uh, you know, he's never fought a southpaw in his career in terms of kickboxing and boxing ranks. So uh, it's a surprise for him here tonight. Yep, yep. Well, it's all a learning curve up there. And, you know, you learn. Learn on the job sometimes, which is what he's doing. But uh, he's he's definitely had Paminda Singh in a bit of trouble. He wants to be a bit cautious because, as we know, Singh's got some power in that left hand. Pretty accurate with it. Damaski, though, it's all his round this one. It's been a better round for oh, Ray Damaski. He's definitely better. winning this round. Oh, yeah. Good, good, some real good work. 40 seconds remaining, round two. And Damaski on top. And speaking to his team, they want bigger and better fights and titles in 2020 and he has to get past Paraminda Singh here tonight and so far so good he's he's had a good solid start he looked yeah. at the match gear this round quite comfortable this round and finding a home for that right hand Barry Michael yeah just got nailed with the left hand again but the right hand's been a winner winner for Damachki this round he's landed some bombs um Singh's you know showing some heart here and showing a lot of ability wild shot there from Damachki Countering shot to right. the to the, the right side of Damachki's body as we hear the bell around two. Quite an interesting round, gents. How did you score that, Barry? Yeah, that was a better round for Damachki. I think he got the point that round, but you know, both boys had their moments, both landed, but Damachki definitely had the better of that round, I think. Yeah, for me, Damachki took that round 10-9 some of the highlights here, Peter Manny Artis, and he found a home for that right hand, the 38-year-old, the Lebanese fighter. Nice straight right hand there. Straight right. right. That's the shot. That's the shot that had him in a lot of trouble. That was a big power right hand straight down the middle. And that's what Damatsky needs to land against his South four opponent. And he's, he's a good South four opponent. He's, he's certainly no mug. He knows his way around the ring. Got his corner man flapping the towel. I seriously, I've never, I've never understood why they bother with that stuff. But certainly not going to help you. Round three. Round three, scheduled for six at the heavyweight limit. Ray Dameshki's undefeated record. 
is up for grabs here tonight. And Paramita Singh, the cru oh. cruiserweight heavyweight from India, has been valued for money so far. He has. He's counted a couple of good land a couple of good left hands already this round the match he looks stronger and more powerful but he needs to watch the left hand counter of paminda singh paminda singh over 40 amateur fights and also had a lot of mma fights so he's an experienced fighter yeah yeah look a lot of these indian fighters they got they're tough they're tough and they've got heart they've got big ticker but damachki walking up relentlessly looking for that right hand throws that money punch singh was ready for it here, look at Razor Ray Damashki. His only draw in his name uh, was the Dave, uh, not the Dave Cannon, but Ray. was uh, last year against Ray. Isaac Slade Step from back. Perth. So uh, that's I his only draw, it. and the rest have been KO victories. Yeah, six knockouts, six wins, six knockouts inside two minutes of round three. This Anyone, anyone's round up for grabs here, boys? It certainly is. This is six by three minute rounds, the heavyweight limit. Perriminda Singh with the Green shorts up against Ray Damashki, the undefeated golden boy here of Kings of Combat. And we... Good little right hand. And we are real, oh, big right hand. Damashki ran into a counter hook himself. He did, he and did. you've got to watch those type of punches. Yeah, he, he does, Pete. He needs to be a bit careful. He's getting a bit ahead of himself. He, you know, chopping with the right hand, trying to chop the tree down, loading up the... Big rock. right hand from Damashki. Good work from the match. Key. Oh, and another one. But I tell you, Paminda Singh's not going to give up easily. Yeah, the man from northwestern India really creating a great fight here against Razor Ray Damashki, looking to improve his record to seven wins. But he's coming up against a real tricky set. Oh, Big beautiful. right hand. He's got him. He's got him all. We've got a minute, of a minute remaining. I can't. Paminda Singh in all sorts of trouble. This is Damashki's chance to finish him now. Got to keep, he's got to keep, keep banging him. He's got him, he's got him in a lot of trouble. Whoa. Looking for the finish here. Man, this Indian boy's, he's got some heart. He's been, he's wobbling badly. 35 seconds to go. Big left hand thrown by Faminda Singh. Damaski unloads with both hands. Looking for the finish here, Damaski. He is. Oh, look at Singh. He's Five guys exhausted. could be gassed. 20 seconds remaining. It's just about... Jeff Eddy looking at it very closely. Paminda Singh hanging on for dear life. 15 seconds. Paminda Singh could be saved by the bell. 10 seconds. Dameshki needs one more right hand to oh, end this. Yeah, good counters from Singh. Two left hands. Another one is showing a lot of heart. Wow, what a round. Big round for Dameshki. Wow, huge round for Dameshki. Very close to being stopped there at Paminda Singh. Very close. Singh was in survival mode, but for me, I've got a two-round-to-one in favour of Ray Damaski. There's a right hand. And a good left hand from Singh. Singh dangerous with his left hand, but Damaski dangerous with his right hand. But, two, you know, like both boys having their moments, Damaski winning the fight, but look, he's caught there too. He's a bit of a surprise packet, is uh, Paminda Singh. Oh, there's that right, right that's hand. the one that did it. That was a money shot. That was the money shot. Whatever happens from here, Barry, Raider Mash is going to learn from this. You need fights like this. Yep. Yeah, yeah dangerous. For sure, Pete. Undoubtedly. You know, need hard. good rounds in the bank for Damaski. And uh, that was impressive, impressive stuff that round by Ray Damaski. Code Tower and Hart. Both boys having their moments, to, but Damaski <laughs> nearly stopped him. Round four and a highly thrilling bout between Ray Damaski and Paraminda Singh from India, our Indian visitor has been valued for money and he's been quite dangerous at times as well. Yeah, he has. He's dangerous, all right. Yeah, the trend has been Ray Damachki on the front foot. Kaminda Singh's quite happy to sort of absorb the pressure and throw that straight left hand down the middle, Barry Michael. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. I'll tell you what, he's it's a bit of a surprise packet, Kaminda Singh. Damachki, though, relentless, walking up. You know, he's shown that he's taken some good shots himself, Damachki, and walked through them. Well, if Ray Damashki wants the next step and come up against some of the best cruiserweights in Victoria and nationally, he needs to get through Paminda Singh tonight. He's got to win this, Jordan. He's got to win this and win this in style. He nearly put, he went so close to winning by KO in the last round, it wasn't funny. But uh, Paminda Singh wore everything he threw at him and got through the round. Paminda uh, Singh, as we mentioned, Barry, quite an experienced campaigner, 40 amateur fights. Yep. A lot of MMA action and... 
you know, he's a real, real accomplished fighter. You could see that. Yeah, he is. He's, he's look, the match king, oh, the match king, deadly with that right hand. But Taminda Singh, as you said, showing a lot of talent, a lot of heart, a lot of tricks, and some, and quite a bit of power too. He's definitely been the best accomplished out of oh. all the Singhs tonight. Good left hand from Singh there. Yeah, the man in the green trunks, the tough policeman, is really providing a stern test for Razor Ray Damachki, who's got intent in his eyes to really damage the Indian. Tell you what, this round's still up for grabs. Right. Have a look at the look on his face. Damachki wants to certainly nail him. Ray wants to land that right hand. He does, Pete. And he's deadly with it. That's his money punch. Yep. One more could just about do it, and he knows that. Well, the one in the last round was a was a cracker, and Tamina Singh was in all sorts of trouble. But didn't he show some heart to come back from? And he recovered quickly too. He did. He showed incredible guts, determination. We mentioned that uh, Tamina Singh sort of uh, fought on the MMA scene and a little bit on the kickboxing scene. But Ray Damash, he's also had 22 fights on the kickboxing scene, a former Victorian and Australian Let champion. Quite a bit of experience between both of these fighters. Great matchup for the 10-year anniversary of Kings of Combat. Ultra tune night here from MSAC. These are the type of fights that the crowd like and appreciate. It's Paraminda Singh. He hasn't come here for a pay packet. No. To take his paycheck. He's come here to win the fight. He certainly has. Inside 20 seconds, round four. Probably Damachki's round with the pressure, but, you know, both boys have had their moments this round. And, you know, Paminda Singh finishing strong with 10 seconds remaining. Oh, a good right hand from Damachki. There's that... Oh, what a good round. See another the top round, round. How did you see it, boys? Ray Domaschke for mine. Yep, yep. For me, the last 30 seconds were vital, and I think Ray Domaschke landed the cleaner shot, so I've got him up in this fight. Yep. So the third last fight of the evening, proving to be a great fight between these two fighters. You see Paminda Singh in the corner there, breathing quite heavily but he'll be up for the remaining few rounds against the Mashki. We go to the replays right now. Body work here from Paraminda Singh. He's been valued for money here tonight, and he's also, you know, really stood up to Ray, because Ray Domeshki's landed some big shots on him. He has. He's really stood up well. He's fired back well and, you know, had his, had his moments and hit Domeshki with a lot of good shots. Well-matched fight. For a 10-year anniversary, you need fights like this because the crowd actually absolutely love them. The whole night, all the fights have been well matched. You know, there's been some really good bouts. Round five schedule for six at heavyweight. Ray Damaski up against Paraminda Singh. This brought to you by Kings of Combat, 10-year anniversary in Ultra Tune. And Ray Damaski is going to be looking for a finish here tonight because he wants to keep that high KO record up, but Paraminda Singh's not a guy who gets KO'd by the look of it. Damachki come out on him, come out Oi, dancing on his toes, Sebastian. looking fresh. But uh, he just wants to be wants to be careful with Paraminda Singh's countering left hand. He's dangerous with it. He's loaded. Look, it's loaded. It's cocked and loaded. And Damachki looking for his right hand. It's a, the two pair the power shots of both these guys. Damachki with the right hand, Paraminda Singh Oi. with the left hand. This is the first time that Ray Damashki has actually seen the fifth round. He's only been four rounds before, once before. So uh, he's uh, sort of heading into uh, deep waters here, Barry Mike. Yeah, well, he, he came out looking very fresh, dancing on his toes and very confident. He's definitely done the work and he's got Joe Bowman in his corner and also, you know, yeah. part of the team, Emmanuel Carlos. Good. So they're well trained. Yeah, John Bowman has got a great team now, putting some real good fighters together. Yeah, Ray's looking well conditioned tonight. He's had a 10-week camp inspiring the boys at the gym. David Moy, Eman Carlos, and uh, also another Southpaw, Josh Wright, a Victorian light heavyweight amateur champion. Uh-huh. Who's a Southpaw. Put him in good stead for this matchup. Yeah, we, undoubtedly. You know, you need the Southpaw sparring when you're fighting Southpaws. Paminda Singh giving 110% here. Very, very good matchup indeed. Value for money. And Ray Domeshki. He's been gallant here tonight. He's really, really tried his heart out for that knockout and land that big right hand. It's come a few times where he's shown brilliance of maybe taking Perimenda Singh out, but Perimenda Singh's recovered very quickly. He has. He's, he's a tough cookie, and as I said, he's dangerous. He's a good counter puncher. 
quite a bit of amateur experience. He's looking a bit wobbly on his feet at the moment now, for me to sing. I'm not sure what happened there, but he all of a sudden his attitude changed. A nice little counter there from Singh. 45 seconds still remaining in round five. Anything can happen in 40 seconds. Damashki has been on the boxing scene for three years. He made his debut in May 2016 in Lilydale oh. against Gatsapai Telepe. But here tonight, he wants the biggest scalp of his career against Paminda Singh. Paminda Singh looking seriously exhausted, but still dangerous with his counters. Third man in the ring, Jeff Fetty. He's done a terrific job here tonight, refereeing. He has. He certainly has. He and Ray Damashki is going to get six rounds of professional boxing under his belt. These are the type of fights he needs to progress his career. Yep. yep. And he's got a real live opponent in front of him, the Paraminda Singh, and he's he's going to learn a lot from this. Yeah, he definitely will. Another good round. Another round of domestic. Yeah. Well. yeah, me too. Too persistent, walked up the whole round. Four rounds to run. Paraminda Singh, I've got an unofficially off course. getting ready for some of the replays. Well, both fighters here always willing. It's been a willing heavyweight contest. Loads that right hand up. Great to match. He needs to throw it straight and short. Straight down the middle like he did a couple of rounds ago and land him flush on the chin and nearly had him out of there. But he's getting valuable rounds, Damaski. Yeah, he got nailed well and truly there with a countering right hook. the cruiserweight division in Australia, the current champion, Daniel Russell, who defeated Jaden Plugger Joseph recently. So if the match can come through this, maybe in 2020, there'll be a match up there. Yes, definitely some good round fights six. in the future. Last round. Fighters touch and hands. This at the heavyweight limit. Ray Domeshk is going to be looking for a strong finish to this fight. It's the last round. Well, you know, I think Paminda Singh's corner would have had to tell him that he needed to knock out the win because Damachki's had him in trouble, been putting on the majority of the pressure, and he, on our unofficial scorecards, won the majority of the rounds. He just uses his forearm, Jeff Eddie doesn't miss that one. Nice shots. Oh, big bomb. This is great that he's into the sixth round and still throwing his punches freely. Heavy shots from Damashki. Lands a right hand too. Yeah, that was his, his money punch, but Paminda Singh took that one well. I don't think he's going to go away. Two minutes remaining, round six. He's got this far, Paminda Singh. I don't think he'll go anywhere. Oh, good shot from Singh. Another durable opponent here, Paminda Singh. And I'm definitely back. sure we're going to see more Rose of him Rose in 2019 and 2020. But Razor Ray Damachki, it's his fight to lose. He's up on the scorecards unofficially. We're right here getting to the point. Oh, the he's, got shot. he's got him. The That's the one he wanted. He's nailed him with the uppercut. It's over, I'm telling you. He's nailed him with a beautiful uppercut. I can't see Paminda Singh coming back from this. The doctor's having a good look as well. That was a bomb, that uppercut. He's, he's going to get nailed again. Oh, this he's not for right. The, I don't think he's right. The Fetty's waved him on. He, I don't think Ray he's Demetri right. Ray looking for the big, big right hand. They're going to have to stop this. Stop that. They're going to have to stop it. Paraminda Singh basically out on his oh, feet. He is, but he's showing his experience. He's grabbed and held. He's gone. He's still hurt. He's in a lot of trouble. One more decent shot, and it's going to be over. Singh, Singh hanging on again. Showing a lot of experience here, holding on. He's a tough bloke. He doesn't want to doesn't want to get stopped coming to Singh. Fits his mouth. Oh! Oh! No, That's that wasn't the good. Damaski shouldn't have done that. Well, that's going to give him a, a break. The clock's still running. We've got 30 One seconds point remaining. On One point spat out of the mouth guard on purpose. One point taken off for spitting out the mouth guard. It, it was on purpose. I for sure it was. The match key looking to finish him. Classy finish here from Ray Damaski. Showing his class. Paminda Singh on the on the bike. 
trying to get through the round. I think he'll make it. 15 to go. Will he get through it? He will. He's in survival mode. He deserves to get the distance, but it's been a classy performance for Ray Domeski. It has. He's put Ooh. a lot of people on, on notice here tonight. He's landed some real hard, heavy shots. Has he ever? There's been a few critics of Ray Domeski, but I, I think he's put them to bed tonight with his victory. It's really the making of his career. He stepped up tonight. He's had to step up, and he's done it in style. Whoa! The bell. Swing for the fences. Terrific oh. contest. What a what a good fight. I mean, the seat was in Disneyland in that sixth round, but he managed to survive. Yep, yeah, he's lucky to get through it, but he got through it. Brings it into the contest, and for me, I've got Razor Ray Damaski, five rounds to one up. Some of the highlights here, look at the heavy leather there, thrown by Razor Ray Damaski. Currently resides in Karam. Quality stuff there, Peter Maniatis. It was, and it was a uh, coming out party for Ray Damaski. He really showed his class here tonight, and he's going to be a powerhouse. There's no mistake about that in the Australian cruiserweight division. He's going to put a lot of fighters on notice. Because he's a strong, powerful guy, and he's undefeated, and he's got real heavy hands. Yeah, definitely the best round, that sixth round from Razor Ray. And that's when he tasted the canvas there. He's a fun name from in the sink. But Razor Ray, he was quite a small heavyweight, so the cruiserweight division suits him. And I think that's a perfect sort of division for Razor Ray going forward. He's 38 years of age, and I'm sure he's got a couple of years left in the tank. And a man from Karen. Andre Carlos there in the corner talking to Razor Ray to match me as well as John Bowman, and they'll be satisfied. Two victories for me for the Chelsea Heights boys, and we're still waiting on the main event, which is still to come in two fights time. E-Man Carlos is the boy from Beast Fight Club, and he'll take on Wes Kappa from Western Australia. Give both of these warriors a big round of applause. Six rounds of heavyweight action. India versus Australia. What a fight. Right here in center ring. But after three rounds, sorry, after six rounds of action, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your three judges scored the contest. 58-54, 58-54, and 57-55. Declaring your winner via unanimous points decision and still undefeated red corner, Razor Ray the Maschke. Winners are grinners. Arguably your toughest bout so far of your career. What a tough man Parminder was. How are you feeling besides stuffed, I'm sure, but uh, I'm sure you're happy you got the win by Nano's points decision, mate. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy. Um, pretty disappointed with my, um, with my performance, to be honest, even though I won. Um, I was sort of rushy. I've never fought a Southpaw before, so I was pretty... Um, I was pretty nervous fighting a southpaw because they're real hard. I hate fighting them. I hate sparring them. Um, but yeah, he was um, yeah he was definitely responsive. Um, just just as I saw him in all his um, DVDs, he's a really really good um, really really good fighter. He's had like 40 amateur fights. He's only lost a couple, um, and I knew I was in for a tough night. Um, and um, I was I'm pretty happy I got all six rounds out to be honest. Um, I thought I was going to finish him at the end, but. He started doing the good old spit your mouth guard out. Uh, I would have too if I was coming at me, but you know. Called dirty boxing. 
Yes, yeah, good on him, man. He survived, so, yeah, good. Mate, I'm sure in our fifth round I saw that you had a big talking to by Johnny Bowman. You came out, you just fit on your mouth guard and just went hell for leather in that fifth and sixth round. Yeah, yeah, Bowie and Andre, they go, look, go out there, you're losing the fight, go out and knock him out. So that's what I did. The first five, four rounds, four or five rounds, they were trying to tell me to box and all that, and I was trying my best, but um, yeah, he's just, I don't know, I hate Southpaws, and not just that, he's a good Southpaw, he's not crap, you know, so. Um, it was pretty hard, but it's an experience. I'm pretty happy. Um, yeah, no, I'm, thank you everyone for being here. Can I say a few things? Um, I'd just like to thank um, people who support me, especially um, Home Tanning Australia on the back. Roland, wherever you are, there he is. Um, home, home Solarium Beds, guys. If you want a Solarium Bed, jump on the uh, Instagram. Home Tanning Australia. They plug straight into your electricity. Look how brown I am. You're looking great. They're fully legal. They're fully legal. Roland here, the owner of Home Tanning, he supports me. Been mates for over 20 years. I love the guy. Um, I also like to thank uh, Ballo Apparel, um, one of my best mates as well. Harlan Calamiri, Camilleri. He's um, yeah, they've got an awesome brand. Ballo, check it out. Um, also, uh, what else? Moody Massage, my number one man. Keeps my body in shape. They're up in Bayswater. They're wizards. All my supporters, family, friends, I love you guys so much, man. All my cousins, a lot of my cousins that are here, love you guys. Um, old friends, new friends, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show. Kings of Combat, we're going above and beyond, baby. Let's do it. Raise the raid, Zemashki, ladies and gentlemen, your victor here in Centre Ring, remaining undefeated. Uh, congratulations, Ray. I just want to thank you for being on the show. I busted your chops to be on it because 10 years ago, you won the East Coast title with Cal on our first ever show, and it's great to see Cal here. We welcome Kelly. Um, so, man, you know my OCD and stuff. I wanted you on the 10 year show. I know opponents pulled out on you. I know it's tough MMA boxing, but there you go, yeah? No more phobia of Southpaws. We'll get you another one now that you love them so much. Thank you very much. You're going to be the Southpaw King, okay? No, 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 no more Southpaws. Give them Mark Kassab, you're up for Southpaws next. We're going to cross the commercial break. Give me a return, the semi main event. Money, cars, clothes, and the riches. Tiger! No, I'm a kitty cat, silly. No, Tiger! Dad! <laughs> ladies! Mike Tyson! World champion! Oh my god! Have you ladies seen Francis? You know my tiger, king of the jungle. Oh. Car trouble? No. Tiger, tiger trouble. trouble. Avoid unexpected situations. Ultra Tune roadside assistance. Car trouble? Get your car serviced at Ultra Tune. <laughs> and now to the semi main event of the hey, evening. Oh, yeah. In the blue corner, <laughs> Ibrahim Tumba. And gentlemen, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Jade, J. Mitch, Mitchell. 
My name is Jay, J. Mitch Mitchell, aka The Matador. Currently ranked number eight in the world in the super middleweight division. I feel great coming into this fight. I suffered a bad injury 2017 to my neck. So all of 2018, I dealt with injuries. I have given my life to boxing. I've sacrificed so much. My wife has sacrificed so much. And to be sitting on the sidelines has just absolutely killed me. So it just means the world to me to be back. A very dangerous opponent, but I believe my boxing IQ and my boxing ability I should be able to outbox him comfortably, especially now that the body feels good, I can actually throw some heavy leather again. I will be looking for a finish. I want to make a statement now that I'm back. service centers eight by three minute rounds boxing rules in the light heavyweight division ladies and gentlemen introducing first fighting out of the blue corner trained by emmanuel Muldana out of pst boxing with an official weight of 75.40 kilograms wearing the shorts with the colors of tanzania with a record of 34 fights 23 wins 11 losses 16 wins coming by way of knockout Fighting out of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, ladies and gentlemen, Ibrahim Tanba. <laughs> and across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Len Mitchell, out of the training ground with an official weight of 79 kilograms even, wearing the black trunks with yellow, pink, and leopard. A record of 19 fights, 18 wins, 9 coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of the Mornington Peninsula, he is the current WBC and OPBF champion and the current IBF Pan Pacific champion, Al Matador, Jade J. Mitch Mitchell. When the action begins, your man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Ignatius Missalides. We are getting to the semi-main event of the night. This is a 10th year anniversary for Kings of Combat, proudly brought to you by Ultratune Auto Car Service Centers, Mr. Sean Buckley. We've got the world rated Jake Mitchell up against Ibrahimu Tamba from Tanzania. It's going to be a massive, massive international contest, Barry Michael. It certainly is, Pete. Uh, Jade Mitchell, you know, been, been out of the ring for quite a while, but a beautiful boxer up against uh, Ibrahim Tamba, who's uh, got 23 wins, and out of those 16, he's won by knockout. So he's got power, this guy. Uh, 11 losses, a, a journeyman, you'd probably call him. But uh, he's up against a very slick fighter indeed in Jade Mitchell. Yeah, Jade Mitchell's last fight was in December against Kim Polson, a Danish fighter who jumped up from welterweight uh, to super middleweight. But this fight will be at light heavyweight. More of a tune-up fight for Jade Mitchell for some bigger fish in 2019 and 2020.
Ibrahim Tampa is quite a good athlete. We can see that he's in good shape. And most authorities in Tanzania, they come very fit and hard. And he looks the part anyway. So right at the moment, we've got a live opponent in front of Jade Mitchell. And Jade Mitchell looking for bigger fights, especially in 2020. There's no doubt about that. And he's world rated in the top 10. So I'm sure he's uh, got an eye at some of the big guns, the super middleweight division. Yeah, you know, beautiful boxer, Jade. Good, you know, great movement, fast hand, hard to hit. He's the sort of opponent that, you know, makes good fighters look bad. Yeah, currently and ranked number number eight in the WBC. But you look at some of the super middleweight champions, Anthony Durrell, Callum Smith, Caleb Plant, and Billy Joe Saunders is the WBO champ. Yeah, all great fighters. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, a, a southpaw mainly switch hitter, but not a big puncher, but a brilliant mover. Callum Smith, a monster. In awesome power, Callum Smith. Tampa, quite athletic and quite fast hands. So if over Mitchell, jabbing nicely on the front foot, trying to get Tampa back. So far, it's been a pretty even type of contest. And Jade Mitchell needs these type of rounds because he's coming back from injury. Yeah, he's been need... inactive. And he's also got his father, Lenny, in the corner from the Mornington Peninsula. And they are serious players because they're after some big fights up against Zach Dunn, who you managed, Barry. Yeah, well, Can we get know, that fight going? You, look, I think there's a big chance that fight could happen next year. Um, there's, look, there's, no one's ever really offered Zach Dunn. Zach Dunn's copped a lot of flack. You know, uh, you know Jade's made... A, a lot of comments saying he'd love to fight him. Zach Dunn will fight anyone, I can assure you of that. No one's talked dollars and cents, which is what boxing's all about at the top level. It certainly is. Well said, Barry Michael. And, you know, Pete, Pete also, Zach Dunn's number four in the WBO as well. Got a nice left hook from Jade Mitchell. He, you know, he looked like he was going to get a shot against Billy Joe right. Saunders before Thank Billy you. Joe Saunders um, changed, changed management. And they're opening, they're looking for a big shot. But I, I would like to see Jade, Mitch, Jade Mitchell and Zach Dunn have... Oh, big oh. shot! Tampa goes down! It's over. What a left hook from that Jade Mitchell. That was a massive shot! Wow! He's called the doctor. That what a was statement a that huge was. huge shot. That's a statement shot. Wow, he made a statement there, Jade Mitchell. Wow. We need to see the replay of that. Tampa he... hit his head hard on the canvas. Oh, man. What a clean knockout. The that's doctor's right on top of him, and that's experience from the doctor. Because he went down like a bag of spuds, Barry. He certainly did. And that was a shock. You know, Jay's a brilliant boxer. We, you know, he, he's not an explosive one-punch knockout, but he just did it there, one-punch knockout. But you know what? It's a pity in a way because he needed some rounds. He needed some rounds. Let's have a look at the replay. There's Lenny giving his son a hug, and rightly so. He certainly got his... Approach. Right, here we go. There it is, the it's left hook. It's a left hook. Oh, it's a peach. That's oh. right on the button and the jab to push him down. Yeah, I don't think he needed it. Fast hands from Jade Mitchell. Oh, he's got fast hands. No the right hand no. landed. Oh, Short left right hook hand. and in the peach. It was a double right hand. He started to warm up, but Tampa went down very, very heavily. Certainly made a statement here tonight, Jade Mitchell. Yeah, Jay Mitchell gets his 10th KO of his career in 19 fights. He's now the WBC number eight, and he wants some of those champions. Callum Smith was offered him in June, didn't take the fight as it was too soon, so maybe in 2020 we might see this matchup. Spectacular yeah, well, knockout victory from Jay Mitchell. He landed those short, sharp punches. When that first one landed, Barry, bang. And that's all she wrote. See what he did? He threw the landed the right hand, then he sort of tapped him again and set him up and banged him with the left hook. There oh, he well done. Two Jay right Mitchell. hands and a left hook. Great, great finish. Tanzanin didn't know where he was. <laughs> it's great to see that Tanzanin is up and Ibrahim Tamba and Emmanuel Mundwa next to him is one of his trainers. These fights are brought to you by Kings of Combat, 10 year anniversary. Ultra Tune Auto Service Centers. Been a fantastic night tonight, and can't wait for the main event. Emmanuel Carlos up against Wes Kappa for the vacant IBF Pan Pacific title at middleweight. And the winner of this match will definitely get a world ranking. Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes and 47 seconds into round number one. This fight ended declaring your winner by knockout Jade, J. Mitch Mitchell. There we go, Jade Mitchell.
Gibbs just singles himself out as a massive play in that super middleweight division. Great activity fight to get a knockout like that, Barry. Yeah, Pete, you know, like, he probably had a lot of tougher sparring sessions, while I'm sure he would have, leading up to this fight, you know, because he always gets himself in good condition, but he's, been, he's had trouble with injuries, Jade, and he said to me, I spoke to him last week, he said, Barry, it's the first time I've gone into a fight and I'm just, everything's been perfect. I've got no injuries. I'm going to show him what I've got. Look really sharp. Jade, Jamie, it's Mitchell, Jade. Your first time fighting on Kings of Combat on their 10 year anniversary, their 25th show. You won that in emphatic style, a big KO. Congratulations, how are you feeling? I feel great, mate. It feels great to be back. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. I'm sorry, I, I actually plan on getting a few rounds in, but um, for the past couple of years, anyone who's close to me knows I've been dealing with tears in my shoulders and all sorts of stuff. I can finally launch with some power again, so, um, it feels good to not have shoulders which are torn to bits, so the, the evidence is there. I've got some power. Now we're going to look at the replay of your KO. Talk us through it, mate. Uh, he was leaning out to the left there, uh, le leaning out to his right, and that, that's all she wrote. Yibbida, yibbida. Nah, it's a little bit of... That was one for good measure at the end. One for the road. That was very well done, mate. Uh, anyone you want to thank for tonight? Hey, I would like to wish my wife, Tegan, a happy seven year anniversary, baby. Thank you very much. Hey, and um, everyone who made the trip up from the peninsula, exciting things on, are on the horizon now. We've just signed a new five fight contract with, that'll be live on, live on TV. Um, we've got big things in the pipeline. It's onwards and upwards from here. So it's very exciting. I'm so happy to be back. A pleasure to have you on Kings of Combat. Ladies and gentlemen, Jade, J. Mitch Mitchell, El Matador, your victor in our semi main event. Winners are grinners, and uh, Mr. Pickin there in the corner proudly pours the water in a Jay Mitchell. You saw that peach left hook. He's in a jab, just a double measure. Terrific finish to the fight. The right hand, short right hand again, left hook. Three or four big punches, and that did the trick. Yeah, definitely the highlight real knockout of the night. Finishing the show, Jake Mitchell, well done. A big congratulations to Lenny Mitchell as well. Team Mitchell, A-plus here tonight. Nineteen seventy-nine. What a year. Petrol was only 33 cents a litre. The average wage was just $232 and you could pick up a brand new Kingswood for just over four grand. Since then, a lot of things have changed. The one thing's remained true. The great ultra-tuned promise to offer a quality service at an affordable price by experienced mechanics. Ultra-tuned, over 32 years in the business and still going strong. And remember, trust your car with us and keep your new car warranty. I'm here centre ring with undefeated boxer Mark Kassab. Mark, how are you enjoying Kings of Combat tonight and what you've seen in front of you? Yeah, no, it's a good show. I've come to every single one. Um, yeah, so we're just fighting in October 25th and December 7th. We're willing to fight anybody, anybody at all. Anybody at all? 79 kilos, anybody at all? Anybody, anyone in particular in the venue here tonight, Mark Kassab? Anybody at all? Mark, October 25th, you're fighting on Team Ultimate Show at the Western Market Hotel. You're joined by some great fighters, Hamada Lush, Nasik Saab, your cousin, uh, your good self, and Hassan Daihani. It's going to be a great show, and as always, I'm sure it's going to be a sellout. Yeah, 100%. It's going to be a good show. We've got good boys on. Um, as you know, House is a good fighter. Nasa, my cousin, and Hamad, of course, going to be a good show for all on it, you know what I mean? It's going to be a busy year because then on December 7th, you back it up on Kings of Combat number 26. Uh, it's going to be a big end to the year for Marcus R. Yeah, Hish has been good enough to put us on December 7th. Thanks a lot, Hish. And yeah, whoever puts in front of us, we'll just fight him. So the call's out. Anyone in your weight division, anyone in Australia, Marcus Saab's here. Just uh, make the phone call. Yeah, Hish is working it out along with Joe McCauley. But yeah, anyone they want to put in front of me, I think anyone's up for the challenge, I'm here. Thank you very much for attending, everyone. October 25, get down to the West End, a star-studded lineup. I just want to thank Joe DeMacaulay and James Rosler from Team Ultimate. You guys have always been um, supporting me. I really appreciate it. With Mark, I have the pleasure of co-managing his career 
and there is a progression and we are going to get Mark world rated and then moving forward we want to aspire to fight someone like a Jade Mitchell very respectfully I was wrapped that Jade was on the show and we've got him back um, in the ring and he signed a contract and we work alongside with the persons that have signed Jade up so we just want to make good fights and we'll take that fight anywhere in the future and I just wish everyone all the best and I hope you enjoy the main event thank you very much Thank you, Shannon. A big thank you to Blue Solar Energy Company as well. Great sponsors of Kings of Combat number 25. World champion. Oh my god. Have you ladies seen Francis? You know my tiger, king of the jungle. Oh. Car trouble? No. Tiger, tiger trouble. trouble. Avoid unexpected situations. Ultra tune roadside assistance. Get your car serviced at Ultra Tune. Ladies and gentlemen, your following bout is the Kings of Combat 25 main event of the evening. Fighting out of the blue corner, where's the Captivator? Kappa! opponent fighting out of the red corner Emmanuel Eman Carlos My name is Emmanuel Carlos and I fight out of the Beast Fight Club This fight's a really big fight we know if we get this win then this is going to open a lot more opportunities and I'm ready to take it all the way Our preparation has been good I'm training really hard, I'm pushing myself to the absolute limit. You know, if you're an Australian boxing fan or even kickboxing, you know, the name, the West Kappa, you recognize the name straight away. And saying that he's a very experienced fighter. You know, with my hunger to get the win and, you know, the crowd behind me and family and friends, it only motivates me and pushes me to train harder. You know, this guy's steady in my way. You know, from the dream of becoming world champ and come September the 14th, it's going to be a hell of a fight. I'm not walking out without that belt.
Tonight's fights are under the auspice of our IBF with your IBF supervisor, Mr. Ben Kilty. Under the auspice of professional boxing and combat sports board of Victoria, your judges at ringside are Mark Cook, Chris Anderson, and Matt Tyne. Your doctor is Dr. Chris Buck, timekeeper, Mr. Damian Memory. And when that bell tolls, you're man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Jeff Eddy. Tonight's fights are brought to you by the UltraTune Auto Service Centers located all over this great land. Ladies and gentlemen, both warriors have now entered the ring. And this is the main event of the evening. Melbourne, let's bring the noise. It's main event time. 10 by three minute rounds, boxing rules in the middleweight division. They will be fighting for the IBF Pan Pacific middleweight title. Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Justin Lacey out of Lacey's Boxing Gym, an official weight of 72.40 kilograms, wearing the maroon fight shorts with black. A record of 24 fights, 20 wins, one draw, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Perth, Western Australia, he is the former Australian middleweight champion. He is Wes, the Captivator, Kappa! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Andre Carlos, John Bowman, and the entire team out of the Beast Fight Club, within a fight record of 11 fights, 10 wins, one loss, seven wins coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Karam in Victoria. He is the current Victorian champion and the OPBF silver middleweight champion, Emmanuel Eman. We have come to the main event time of the evening, 10 years anniversary, Kings of Combat, brought to you by UltraTune Auto Car Services, Mr. Sean Buckley, will be wrapped the way this night has gone. It's been a terrific night, but the jewel in the crown is right here now. Emmanuel Carlos up against Wes Kappa for the IBF Pan Pacific title. The winner of this fight gets a top 15 world ranking. And Eamon Carlos, he's one of the favorites here in Victorian boxing. And Wes Kappa's already had a draw up against Sam Solomon, the former world champion in commentary, Barry Michael. And also we've got the main man here, Jordan Pallarini. How you seen this guy, this fight, guys? Yeah, look, this, you know, quality bout on paper. Uh, two quality opponents, for sure. Emmanuel Carlos, uh, you know, been very impressed with him. His only one loss was, you know, close decision to Dwight Ritchie, who, you know, gave Tim Zoo a hard fight. But, uh, you know, he's only a young, very, relatively inexperienced fighter. Wes Kappa had a lot of experience um, as Muay Thai. Uh, amateur boxing and professional boxing. So we've got a cracking fight here on our hands indeed. Fast start from Carlos. He's already landed some telling body punches. He loves to go downstairs to the body. E-man Carlos there from Chelsea Heights. 27 years of age, the current OPBF silver middleweight champion and also a Victorian champion when he won that title back in 2017 against Apachak Pochacharut on Peter Maniata's events. Carlos, big shots to the body, Barry. Well, it's a great way to start a fight, isn't it? His last fight over Wade Ryan, he, he virtually, his, his body shot towards the end of the fight really started to take their toll. And I said to him to work on the body shots because he can be deadly with it. And he's really showing it here in the opening round against against Wes Kappa, showing great body shots. What oh, a look at that. Great start to this main event, 10 year anniversary oh, from Kings of Combat. Carlos is sharp tonight. Is he ever? 
He's landing some vicious body shots. Kappa copping, you know, quite a few heavy shots in the opening couple of minutes here, opening just under two minutes. Where's Kappa's got a draw oh. up against Sam the King Solomon? That's a type of level opposition here. Quite an accomplished kickboxer. Where's Kappa? He also fought in Las Vegas. He's fought in Mexico. He's, He's done it uh, all. Yeah, he was trained by Mikel Diaz from top rank. The cut man, it was Manny Pacquiao. And Mikel Diaz used to tell me. Oh, Wes Kappa's got like a massive, massive array of punches. So full respect to Wes Kappa. But right at the moment, we're seeing a, a, a prospect fold right in front of us in Eamon Carlos. Eamon Carlos can fight Tim Zhu. He can fight Michael Zarafa. He can Man fight Jeff Horn. There's big fights here for Eamon Carlos if he gets past Wes Kappa. Eman Emmanuel Carlos, this first round, he's hey, gone to a level I've never it, seen him it, before. I've, I've seen the potential in him. He's body punching up and down. He's got a good shot back by Kappa. You know, he's going to be a tough cook, cookie Kappa, but Emmanuel Carlos this round has really landed some great shots. And these fights will be on ESPN. Well done, Paris Productions again. Oh, yes, oh, Carlos oh. lands a big right your left hook, and he's going to look for the oh, finish early. Oh, man, look at this. this Kappa's in a world of hurt right up against the ropes. And where's Kappa? One tough boy indeed. Just took a couple of really heavy shots. He's... Got it, you know, he's, he's a real fighter, Wes Kappa, in the first round. A big round for Emmanuel Carlos, massive round. That was a special round there for Eman Carlos. He really lit up his opponent, Wes Kappa, and the Victorian and OPBF champion has made a statement in that first round. He means business. We saw the replay, the sharp start from Eman Carlos. Oh, man, that was impressive. That was a real impressive opener indeed. Short, sharp club and punches. Eamon Carlos, class with a capital C, starting to shine here, and we're starting to see the best of him. Yep. This is his 12th professional fight. He took that fight against Dwight Ritchie on short notice and put in a massive performance. And he learned a lot from that. The short rip to the body and hook to the head. Carlos is on fire here tonight. He's certainly on fire. You know, he, he was impressive with everything he did. And Wes Kappa, to his credit, took some bombs. But I'll tell you, he'll be back in this fight this round. He's an experienced, tough cookie. John Bowman and the team egging Eamon Carlos on because Ben Kilty's here, the IBF Pan Pacific supervisor. And Ben Kilty is the man that gives instructions if they get the top 15 world ranking with the IBF. And yep. well, Ben's done know, great stuff for Australian boxing. So he ever. He's the man. That, uh, ben Kilty, as we say that, Eamon Carlos lands a lot of short, sharp body punches, Barry. Yes, mate. His body punching is incredibly impressive. Where's Kappa firing back with his own good body shot from Kappa there too. But Emmanuel Carlos got the faster hands at this stage and, and power in those rips as well. I, that was oh, that was marginal. Third man in the ring, Ignatius Missalese. Oh, good it, shot back. This is 10 by 3 minute rounds at the middleweight limit. Jordan, how are you oh, seeing it? Yeah, that first round started like a house on fire. Eman Carlos, 10-9 in that first round. But you look at uh, his opponent here, Wes Kappa, well-conditioned. His last fight was in July against Fadia Czukasin from Poland. That fight went the decision where he lost by unanimous decision. But he'll be here all night, Wes Kappa. Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's experienced. Um, you know, Muay Thai, boxing, the whole, whole caper. He's done it all. And uh, as I said, he's a, he's a very experienced campaigner indeed. But, you know, Emmanuel Carlos looking very impressive in the opening round and the, and the, the first the first half of this second round as well. Carlos of Samoan heritage comes from a fighting family. And right at the moment, he's got big things in store because if he can win this IBF Pampac title, carries a world ranking, it gets him on a map. Oh! He ran into a left hook there as I was saying that. You can't sleep on West Kappa. He's a live opponent. There's no doubt about that, Barry. Oh, he's a live opponent. He, he switched to Southpaw, and then he landed that left-hand bomb. He switched to Southpaw. He timed it perfectly. It's very tough to stop Wes Kappa. Never been stopped in his career, but he, both fighters have had victories over Wade Ryan. But Wes Kappa in his second round has really lifted and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eman Carlos. Yeah, he's... Oh, look, very exciting opening. Two first two rounds, very impressive from both boys. First round was basically Emmanuel, Eman Carlos dominating, but this round, West Cap has landed some bombs as well. Fought back really well. Nice left left rip there to the trunk of 
Wes Kappa, but Eman Carlos in the centre ring now, trying to light up his opponent, but Wes Kappa, a lot of experience to his name. He fought over in Poland last time out, but look at Eman with those short punches on the inside, Peter Maniatis. Eman Carlos started very fast this round, but Kappa landed a big shot, but Carlos now has got the tendency and he's got the rhythm back. But so far, it's been a world-class fight here tonight. Both competitors at a top level, Barry. Oh, super top level. World-class for sure, Pete. Both boys, you know, throwing some really good shots. Great round. Great round. Much better round for West Coast. Very difficult round to score, but if I have to go somebody, I'm going in favour of the blue corner there in Wes Kappa 10-9, so it's one round apiece unofficially, of course. Here's some of the replays on the screen. Kappa there going to the midsection and then coming up top on Eman Carlos. A couple of shots a little bit low there. Yeah, a little bit south of the border there. Yeah, look at that nice left rip there from West Kappa, the West Australian man. And he was actually ruled rated by the IBF a uh, couple of months back. Lost the rating as he lost over in Poland. Triple but some jab. good work there. Some silky skills there from West Kappa. Yeah, definitely. Big, big things in store for the winner here. A top 15 IBF world rating. Ben Kilty's here. And all the people on the Gold Coast, the toy box, Jimmy free, Vegas and the boys. Get down there. It's a it's a deluxe club, Barry Toy Box. If you yes. want to go out there and have a beverage or a keep drink, it, top right on. Pete, I could just see you and I having a beverage top or two up there, mate. And we'll do it at some stage. And happy 50th birthday to Jimmy Vegas. It's a terrific nightclub. So get down there on the Gold Coast. All the people that are down there, get down there for a few drinks there tonight. Toy Box Nightclub in Surface Paradise on Surface Paradise Avenue. Fantastic club. As we say, that Eamon Carlos going to work again. Yes. He punches up. Landing some good shots, Seaman Carlos. Both boys having their moments. Where's Kappa going to the south foot stance? Briefly back in the orthodox stance again. Quality stuff exchanged by both fighters. Quality, real top quality, world class main event here. Kings of Combat live on Epicenter and ESPN as well, I believe. But Epicenter live, live streaming. My great mate Adam Watt. Man, the man behind Epicenter doing a wonderful What's job for our What's fantastic what, sport elbow, in this okay? country and overseas. Elbow, right? Jordan, how are you seeing this fight going now? Yeah, for me, unofficially won a piece, but Eman Carlos in this third round has taken over a little bit. But every time you say Eman sort of getting on top of Kappa, Kappa comes back strong. It's the commentator's curse. But one thing is, this is going to be a war of attrition, this fight. It is going to be a war of attrition. You're right. You know, where's Kappa? You, you think he's getting hurt, and then he comes flying back and lands some bombs of his own. Wes has got to draw up against Sam, the King Solomon, so he's got to be at a good level to get a draw up against Sam Solomon. Sam, the wizard, that should, you know, he's a wizard, Sam Solomon, you know, but he's, he's finally retired now at, what, 45? You know, it took him ages to get his real chance at a world title. I always knew he could win a world title, Sam Solomon, one of our greats, undoubtedly. Here we go, him and Carlos looking to get the ascendancy in this round again because Let it go, this has Let been go. a seesawing type Let of fight. I've got Carlos in front. Yep. But it's been very, very competitive. And Wes Kappa, he's a live opponent that's coming to win, and he's got more tricks than you can imagine. Wow, some wonderful exchanges by both fighters. Bomb, body shot, chopping right hand from Emmanuel Carlos there. Coming up 35 seconds remaining, round three. Of Ignatius, yep, okay, you will lose a point if he goes low again. A couple of seconds going south the border, but... Some great shots by both fighters. These fights are brought to you by Ultratune Auto S Service Centres. Where's Kappa in the south for stance again? Yeah, man, Carlos, look at him lighting up his opponent on the inside, but he's had a great sparring camp. He's uh, trained for eight weeks, sparring the likes of Campbell, some of your Commonwealth Games athlete, as well as Sam Solomon, who's done a little bit of work with Eman Carlos. So it's put him in good stead for an unorthodox fighter in Wes Kappa. How are we looking at this round, guys? Who do we score it to? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty seesawing round. Uh, look, I don't know. I, I think maybe Eman Carlos just about pinched it, but it was there wasn't a lot in it. Here's a replay: Carlos going to the body, digging to the body. How did you guys see it? I scored that to Carlos. Nice right hand. Yeah. Carlos. Thought he was just a touch sharper. Yeah, I think so too, Pete. 
Nice work there to the body there of Wes Kappa. But look at that nice left hand there from Eman Cullis. Just missed the header there of Kappa, but he's showing his worth here tonight. This could be the making of Eman Carlos. He's already yeah. showed a good performance against Wade Ryan. If he backs it up against Kappa, well, he gets some of the big fish on the world stage. Good point, Jordan. It's, you know, it's a fight he needs to win, Eman Carlos, if he's going to go to the next level. Same, look, you know, games can be said with Wes Kappa. Whoever wins this, you know, goes to the next level. So it's a very, very important fight indeed. Two quality, two quality world-class fighters four. here. Round four, scheduled for 10. IBF, Pan Pack title at stake. 10th year anniversary for Kings of Combat. We've got Eamon Carlos. Our unofficial scorecards may be slightly in front, but Wes Cap has put in a terrific performance, and this is going to be a dandy type of fight, Barry. Yeah, yeah, look, I think you're probably right. Emmanuel Carlos marginally in front. Wes Cap a dangerous, quality, dangerous opponent. Smiles as he gets clipped with a left watch hook it, to the it. head. Good, good sportsmanship being shown between both fighters. Real good sportsmanship. Good head movement there from Carlos, but did get clipped. Both fighters have been active in 2019. You look at Kappa, he also had a fight against a Filipino earlier in the year, and he won that uh, quite comfortably there over the Filipino. But this is a different test altogether against no, a young there, line no, who's trying to make a statement on the middleweight scene. Yeah, very fast hands, Emmanuel Carlos. You know, very, you know, flashing fast hands. He's got Kappa for speed, there's no doubt about that. Yep. Kappa's got the experience, and he's a tough, tough campaigner who's got a full kit of punches, boxes out southpaw and orthodox, and does it well. You look at Kappa's Muay Thai record, 32 wins, three losses, and uh, two draws, so quite a diverse background on the combat. Oh. Nice punches again from Eamon Carlos. When he lets them go, he looks flashy. Doesn't he? He looks sharp, and he's he's definitely got all the array of, kit yep. of punches. Yep, he has, beat Quality stuff. Got some good quality reflexes, and that right hand sort of grazed the face there of Wes Kappa. How would Carlos go up against someone like Tim Zhu? Yeah, he'd give Tim Zhu a hard fight, undoubtedly. Yeah, a couple of years back, that fight was actually meant to happen, but uh, Tim Zhu pulled out due to an ankle injury, so I wouldn't mind seeing that in the future, Peter Maniatis. That'd be a terrific fight in the future. I mean, there's a, a number of fights there for him and Carlos, depending how he goes tonight, obviously, but if he does win the title and get a world rating, well, that gives him credit and currency. Yep. That's what the fight game's all about, Barry. You've got to bring something to the table. You do. When you've got to fight these big names. They yeah. want something they can get as well. And that's what we want. Quality quality, quality Australian fights against our best. You know, and then, then if they get to the top, beating everyone in this country, then they make the next move against the big guys overseas. Carlos, as far as I'm concerned, winning this yes. round as yep. well. Yep. And it's been a good round for Carlos. It has. Seems to be in cruise control in this round, really controlling the ring. The ring generalship in favour of the boy from the southeast, Eman Carlos. Look at this, we you? Good, good sportsmanship. They kissed each other at the Wayne last night as well. So if you, <laughs> yeah, they did. So if you're heading to Toy Box and you want to do some kissing, get down there, Jimmy That's Vegas, have a scotch on us and a vodka. There's going to be plenty of action at Toy Box there tonight. Make no mistake about that. As we say that, Carlos unloads with some big shots on Kappa. Yeah, look, it's been a been a good round for Car Emmanuel Carlos. He wins that round. Comfortably. Barry? Yep. Yeah, the easiest round there for Eman Carlos, that third round. That fourth round, sorry. And he's really cruise control against his opponent here in Wes Kappa from Western Australia, trained by Justin Lacey out of Lacey's boxing gym. We see the action here, Carlos. Good head movement. Good head movement. Slipping and sliding. Nice shot there. Short, sharp, crisp punches. Nice array of punches there from Eman Carlos. On the inside, showing his crisp punch, punching skill set. On the front foot here, look at that nice jab to the body. Yep. Really keeping his opponent guessing. And what a fight we have on our hands in this main event on Kings of Combat 25. Hisham Hanna has done a great job. Certainly has, and you know, we're seeing a bit of everything. Quality boxing, power, you know, orthodox south four. You know, these guys are really showing us the full repertoire, repertoire and quality boxing. Indeed. Round five, schedule for ten. Watch your heads in there. Watch Even your heads. Carlos up against Wes Kappa for the vacant IBF Pan Pack title. 
unofficially got it three rounds to one in favour of Carlos. But now the fight's in the trenches, and Eman Carlos. Look at that crisp, crisp and sharp punching Barry Michael. Unbelievable. Crisp, unbelievable, Jordan. Crisp, fast, powerful. And, you know, saying that, Wes Kappa has got a great left grip of his own, but Emmanuel Carlos undoubtedly in superb condition because they don't seem to be bothering him, and he's firing back with both hands. Yeah, there's a bit of swelling on the face there of Kappa, but he comes back with some array of punches there to the midsection of Carlos. His left rib's vicious. It is. It is. He's got fast hands. Nice but right hand there, though, from uh, Wes Kappa. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on. Oh. Time. Yeah, that's... You're over there. You're over there. You're over there. Oh, dear. That's, that's unfortunate. Take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. Oh, yeah. Low blow. Up the five, so yeah, a little bit south breaths. of the border there, Peter Maniatis and Barry oh, Michael, but he should be good to go underway in a couple good. of minutes, hopefully. The he West Cap and just goes, good yeah, shot, Emmanuel. Yeah, good shot. Right, point deduction on the next one. You heard there from Ignatius Missilidis, there'll be a point deduction next time. Eman Carlos hits a little bit south of the border on Wes Kappa, so he's warned. I'd, I'd you, like mate. to see that in slow-mo. I mean, we had the wrong angle. I didn't see it, how low it was, but it certainly seemed to hurt uh, Wes Kappa indeed. I'd like, we'd like to see that and get that one on replay. Oh, good oh, left hook. Oh, oh double punch. left hooks from Emmanuel Carlos. Good punching. Kappa back. Both fighters having their moments, but Emmanuel Carlos unloading both hands. He looks sharp, Emmanuel Carlos. Doesn't he? Don't hold, don't hold, don't hold. Where's Razor there? sharp. Let's, hey, let it go, guys. Let it go. He knows what fight, sort of this, what this can do for him heading into the future. But look at Kappa, that sharp hand speed, and then the overhand right there, Peter Maniatis. It's been a seesawing fight, but for my name, and Carlos has proven tonight that he's going to be a, a really force in the middleweight ranks in Australian boxing. Yeah, agree What's with you, Peter. What's that shoulder? He's shown class here tonight. He's got fast hands, controls controls the, the distance well. He's got good movement, good head movement. He's tough. Complete fighter. He certainly is. Saying that, though, West Kappa landing some good shots of his own at the end. A minute left of the remaining in round five great exchanges by both fighters emmanuel carlos overhand right fast combos oh this fight's a cracker this is this is the quality championship fight an absolute slugfest here in the fifth round and carlos is trying to bring him on to something looking quite comfortable in centering the boy from beast fight club in chelsea heights yeah John Bowman's got a, you know, he's got a top team he's developing there. He obviously, you know, doing a great job with these boys, bringing, bringing them along very well. Wes Kappa goes the right drive to the body, but Manuel Carlos counters back with his own right hand. Great shots from both fighters. What's going Kappa on there? Both guys trying to showboat. What was that about? That's not on. This is the IBF Pan Pack title. Wow. Jordan had just scored that round. Yeah, another round there to Eman Carlos. For me, he's comfortably up, Barry yep. Michael. Yeah, yeah, definitely a Emmanuel Carlos round. But, you know, Kappa had his moments, but wasn't consistent enough. Unofficially, I've got it four rounds to one in favour of Eman Carlos, the yep. Victorian champ. Now to the highlights. A couple of shots there landed by uh, Wes Kappa. Then Eman comes roaring back with a few punches of his own on the inside. He's quite comfortable on the inside and the outside, Barry. Yeah, undoubtedly, he's um, he's lifted his body a touch. Since I saw him fight last time, he showed me that he was he was, he was a good body puncher. And I, I said to him, I said, you should do more of that. And he's really, really lifted to another level tonight. His body punching, well, all of his punches have been superb, but his body work's been great. Both, both fighters are showing some great, great punches. Here we go, it's main event time, Kings of Combat 10 year anniversary. You can't celebrate it better than this fight right at the moment. Emmanuel Carlos up against Wes Kappa. They are fighting for the IBF Pan Pacific title, and it's been a real good contest to date. We got Emmanuel Carlos in front, but this is on our unofficial scorecards. It's round six and it's starting to heat up. Oh, it definitely is heating up, and West Kappa lands a straight left hand, but look at E-Man come back with those short punches on the inside, electrifying here at the MSAC Arena, Commonwealth Games Arena in 2006. But Ignatius gets the fight back on, and we're good and underway. Incredible sportsmanship between these two. But you'd think they're best of mates, to be honest. It's called respect, Barry, isn't it? They've it's both good. got respect for each other. It's good to see. Emmanuel Carlos very relaxed here with his hands by his sides. 
countering. He's got he's got great reflexes. Also some great defense from Emmanuel no, Carlos. He slipped a couple no. of punches from Wes Kappa throughout the fight. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, like, and Wes Bro, Kappa's dangerous. Go, he's dangerous go all the time. Go. He's got a touch of class, Seaman Carlos. That's the word. He's just got that bit of poise, good hand speed. He's tough. He looks like he's going places, doesn't he? He does. Wes Kappa's also fought uh, Tej Pradup Singh in the past. We know Tej is the Australian middleweight champion. So he's come up against some good quality fighters. And this is another one in here, man, Carlos. And look at him go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the phone booth, Peter Maniatis. That's how it's been all night. And Eamon Carlos has got faster hands. So he's been winning the exchanges. And he's definitely put more rounds in the bank so far. And it's been a terrific night of fights. It's been 11 fights here tonight. It's been a massive celebration for the 10-year anniversary. Yeah, look, it's been a remarkable card. Some great, great fights. Um, startling knock, first-round knockout by Jade Mitchell in the, in the main support. Uh, uh, we've got a quality bout here, Emmanuel Carlos and Wes Kappa. Both boys having in their moments, but on our unofficial scorecards, Emmanuel Carlos in front. Wes Kappa coming with a chopping Four. left from the south four right, stance. Right. Here we go, here we go. He's one tough guy, Wes Kappa. He's, you know, he's, he's been there, he's done it no, all. He's there, fought all over the place. And, um, you know, he, he shows respect to his opponent, but he's he's one hell of a fighter himself. Here we go. Kappa now is a south boy. I mean, and then he switches. He, he's, he's hard to tag Kappa at times, isn't he? No, he's very work, experienced. Yep. Very experienced fighter at the top level. And he's still 31 years of age. You'll get a couple good years left uh, of Wes Kappa. But Eman Carlos at 27 years of age in peak physical condition, looking to make a statement. And he's showing it here tonight. He's really the pace setter in this fight. Yep. Yeah, no, he's uh, boxing beautifully. Some, as I said, some great exchanges by both boys. But the majority of consistent punching, cleaner shots is coming from Emmanuel Carlos. Saying that, Wes Kappa just lands a beautiful right hand. He certainly did. It was a peach. Right hand. Oh, and Kappa good finishes around well, but good finish from West Kappa. I think Carlos still wins that round. Yeah, I think he might have just he might have pinched it. A great pop, sort of 15 second flurry there from West Kappa, but Eman Carlos for the majority of that round controlled it. And for me, he's comfortably 5 1 up. Look at some of the highlights here of this IBF Camp Pacific middleweight club. Rolling centre ring, nice sort of right up and up there, and then followed by the left hook, and then came over the top with the right hand. Barry he provides a sort of uh, quality skill set, Eman Carlos. Yeah, quality skill set, fast hands, moves his head very well, uh, counters well. He's got a he's got a bit of everything. This fight's got a bit bit of everything, to be honest. Both both boys, quality boxers indeed. We're overlooking a packed stadium here at MSAC. It's been a terrific night of boxing. And Nasus Michelides calls the charges in and said, let's go. Round seven. Emmanuel Carlos up against Wes Kappa, brought to you by Ultra Tune, Kings of Combat, 10-year anniversary. And this is for the vacant IBF Pan Pacific title. The winner carries a oh. top 15 world rating. We just see the class of Carlos again. Fast hands, Emmanuel Carlos. Bang, bang, bang. You know, like lovely combinations. And then moves. Gets away, lands his combo and moves. Some big fights in store for Emmanuel Carlos it's if he can win tonight against Wes Kappa. You look at Michael Zarafa. Zarafa's looking at Murata, the Japanese fighter who's the WBA welterweight champion. But if he doesn't get that fight, maybe a domestic matchup with Tim Zhu or Eman Carlos could be on the cards, Barry Michael. Yeah, could be on the cards. Eman, Emmanuel, Emmanuel showing tonight that he's up in that class and he's, he's just improving every fight. This is for the vacant IBF title, and Ben Kilt is here, which means that Ben can rate the winner in a top 15 in the world, which would be massive for their career as well. To look up in the ratings, Barry, and see yourself and your name on there, you really start to believe. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a great feeling to get in the top uh, you know, 15 in the Frank, world rankings of any of the major it's bodies. That ben Kelty is, is uh, on, the board of, on the board of the IBF. He does Australia proud, and he certainly tries to help our quality boxers that we have in this country. You know, per capita, we've produced so many world-class fighters, world champions, and we're going to have a lot more in the coming years. Boxing's on the verge of a big boom in Australia. The crowd's getting involved now at MSAC Arena. What a fight this has turned out to be. Wes Kappa goes southpaw again and switches. He's always switching, isn't he? And it's 
difficult for an opponent when one minute you're looking at a southpaw, then it's back to all the Give you nightmares, you know, switch fighting switch hitters there. They're very difficult to fight indeed. But Emmanuel Carlos, you know, doesn't seem to bother him a great deal. He's got very fast hands himself. A couple of good shots from Wes Kappa there. Good right hands. <coughs> now hold it, let's work. There's some clean punching there from Wes Kappa. But you look at the IBF What's title, it's currently vacant at the moment. Sergei Devrachenko will be fighting Gennady no, Golovkin in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, that's going to be an interesting clash. And maybe Eman Carlos, if he keeps winning, you never know, might fight Gennady or Sergei Devrachenko. Wow, well, yes. that'll be something. Um, Gennady Golovkin, I love him. I've met him about four times. He's just a wonderful human being and a great, great champion indeed. And probably coming towards the end of his career after that, that loss against Canelo Alvarez, the second fight, which he probably did lose. The first fight, I thought he was robbed. But a great fighter, Gennady, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. Here we go, Eamon Carlos. I'd, I'd say he's controlling this round as well. Maybe I'm being biased, but I, I think he's won this round as well. But Wes Kappa has had his moments. He sure has. It's pretty, okay. There's not a lot in this one. I, you know, depends how the judges are seen. I, Wes Kappa has had some good moments this round. Both fighters having their moments. Quality stuff. How'd you score that, Jordan? Yeah, I'm liking that round. Sort of the end of that round for Wes Kappa. So I'm going to give that round to Wes Kappa. Could have been 50, but I'll go the Western Australian boy in the blue corner. So you've scored it so far 5-2 to Carlos? Yeah, 5-2 in favour of Eman Carlos. Have you scored a Barry or you're not really? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, that round was very even. I mean, I really wouldn't like to split them, to, to be honest. Could go either way, but, I, you know, I, I Here's see a replay. Carlos, Carlos in landed short, sharp punch. Look at that, left, right, left, three punches. You know, the consistency and the more cleaner punches are coming from Emmanuel Carlos the majority of the time. Wes Kappa does have his moments and lands good shots as well, but Emmanuel Carlos comes back with three or four. Carlos is definitely the sharper, faster puncher. Yeah, that was good by Kappa. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He's got the faster hand. Kappa's got more experience and does roll a lot of the shots off his shoulder, as you saw in slow motion there. Great look there for the picture of Sam Sack Stadium here tonight. It's a What's terrific it? fight card brought to you by Kings of Combat, their 10 year anniversary. To cap it off, we've got Wes Kappa up against Eamon Carlos for vacant IBF Pan Pacific middleweight title. And so far, Carlos may be in front, but it's on an unofficial scorecard. Anything can happen because Wes Kappa's definitely had his moments. He's been a terrific, terrific competitor throughout no, his whole no. career. He's got to draw up against Sam Solomon. So he's at world-class level. He's fought in oh. Las Vegas. He's fought in Mexico. So we've got a real live opponent here tonight, Barry. Yeah, we sure have. And he just shook his head, head where's, where's Kappa after being hit by a combination of about four or five punches. He shook his head. He, he's look, he's got a heap of experience, where's Kappa, and, and you can see it. He rolls with punches well, count as well. Does everything well, to be honest. But saying that, Emmanuel Carlos just that bit faster and, and you know, throws more shots. And, you know, for our money, our unofficial score, scorecard, we've got him in front. But we've got a quality fight indeed. Round eight. Kappa Southpaw again. And for all the viewers on the Gold Coast, get out the toy box. Get to the after party. Enjoy the drink there at Toy Box on Surface Paradise Avenue. Ask for Jimmy Vegas. He'll definitely buy you a drink and enjoy the night there at Toy Box. Because we're enjoying a night here at MSAC. Been a terrific night of boxing. Call the fights with Barry Michael and Jordan Pellerini. And... No better way to cap it off for Neiman Carlos in centre ring up against Wes Kappa for the vacant IBF Pan Pack title. Kappa couple of clubbing, clubbing punches there from Neiman Carlos, Barry. Yeah, but Kappa was having a good round up until then. He got, he's been having a good round, Wes Kappa. He's landed a lot of quality shots this round. Both, as I said, both fighters having their moments. Uh, with one minute, ten, round eight. Coming up to the final two rounds, we've got Emmanuel Carlos in front unofficially. Uh, but Wes Kappa's in there with a chance of anything. Oh, that was low again. That's a point. That's a point. Yeah, he's been warned already, Eman yeah. Carlos. But for me, in yeah. this fight, you look at Eman Carlos, started off well, started off like a pace setter. But uh, Wes Kappa has come back strongly. And for me, he's controlling this round. Round number eight. A point taken off. That could be costly in the heat of things. You cannot afford to lose a point. Let's have a close look at this. Yep, south of the border. Yeah, Wes Kappa was... Certainly hurt badly there. Emmanuel Carlos has been working on his body shots and he's, he's landed a lot of great body shots, but he's got to be a little bit more accurate with them. Short, sharp, fast punches from Carlos. He's got hand speed. He's got class. 
And he's definitely going places, this kid, yeah. Emmanuel Carlos. This is where the cardio comes into play in round number eight. I felt that Wes Kappa was getting strong in that round. Oh, but look at Eman, Eman Carlos at the end of this round number eight. I think he's going to take it if he keeps his flurry going. The boy from Chelsea Heights. Great combos from Emmanuel Carlos there with Wes Kappa up against the ropes in his own corner. 15 seconds remaining, round eight. These fights are brought to you by Altitude Auto Service. Centers, get down Altitude if you need your car service. But right at the moment, Eamon Carlos is servicing Wes Kappa. We think he's winning the fight, but this is on our unofficial scorecards, Barry. Yeah, well, that one goes to Wes Kappa because of the uh, point deduction with the low blow. I think, you know, Wes Kappa definitely gets that round. Yeah, he could be coming closer now. Wes Kappa might be two or three rounds behind Eman Carlos. Has still got a little bit of work to do in the back end of the fight, Barry Michael. Well, you, you, Eman, Emmanuel Carlos, to, to really gain ascendancy, he wants to finish the last two rounds in style and win them in a big way to, to make a statement. He's got to come out and really put them together the, the last two. We want to see what he showed in the first couple of rounds. Here we go, the hand speed of Carlos, the movement. Hand-eye coordination, good head movement. Cops one there, though. Yeah, Kappa's at one tough cookie, isn't he? You know, he, oh, that was well, well south of the border. Yeah, Eman Carlos has got underrated oh. defence, but look at that chopping left hand there from uh, Wes Kappa. And we're gearing up for round number nine here. The championship sort of rounds here, Peter Maniatis. They are, and this is where you get the season conditioning that you need for world title What's fights here, Barry, as you go deeper into the fight. It's like running a marathon, isn't it? Oh, it's undoubtedly like running a marathon. And uh, look, you know, this is a world-class quality fight between two real good opponents here for, for a, you know, an IBF ranking, which is great, top 15 ranking. Take a bow. Kings of Combat, take a bow, Sean Buckley and Ultra Tune. Yep. And take a bow, MSAC. This is an A-plus venue. And it's going to be terrific for boxing to keep keep stadiums like this going because it's got a nice stadium feel, hasn't it, Barry? Yeah, look, it really looks good. The whole, you know, Hisham has done a fantastic job. Um, Kings of Combat putting it together. Sean Buckley, you know, with his, without his sponsorship, it'd be very difficult. And, you know, What's to put heads? these quality of oh, nasty heads? head clash. Nasty close, head clash. Good? No one's cut, oh, I don't think, fortunately. But they really banged heads there like a couple of bulls banging heads but uh, round nine two minutes remaining round nine anyone's round still here in deep waters now but where's Kappa's coming home strong and Michelides will warn Kappa on holding Eman Carlos and they go toe to toe again the crowd roars with every punch they're all behind Eman Carlos he's got most of the support here Peter Maniatis he has he's brought the house and he's got a massive following Eman Carlos very popular person and uh, right at the moment now he hasn't put a foot wrong here tonight. Apparently from taking the point off, he's been outstanding here tonight. He's been outstanding and he's, you know, he's a humble guy. Spoke to him briefly before the fight. You know, he's, you know, he doesn't look like a fighter really. He's, he's uh, a great athlete indeed and got a big future. Wes Cap has been gallant here tonight. He's value for money, Wes Cap. I mean, we mentioned he had a draw up against Sam Solomon. So you've got to be a good decent fight and have a draw up against Sam the King Solomon and you know Jordan he, he's really tried hard here tonight Wes hasn't he? Yeah, what Wes has done is really changing the angles nicely changing from orthodox to southpaw which uh, gives Eman different looks and uh, he struggled a little bit Eman Carlos sort of in the last couple of rounds but uh, for the majority of the fight he has been in control and landed the cleaner punches yep. and I think uh, so far that's why he's two to three rounds up. Yeah I agree with you Jordan. Let's hope we, the judges see it the same way, Pete. Yeah, let's hope. And ESPN covering this fight, so it's great to have exposure like that in a platform for the fighters like this. And a fight like Eamon Carlos and Wes Kappa definitely deserves something like a platform so people can see, you know, the outstanding attributes of both fighters. Oh, I think we had another head catch there, yeah. Fight. Emmanuel Carlos top one on the side of the eye there, I think. Final seconds of this round, 10 seconds remaining in this championship round here. Still one more round to come, and it's game on. But Eman Carlos, for me, in round nine, has done enough. Thoughts on that, Pete Maniano? Carlos, round for nine. Barry? Both boys putting their hands up. Both boys, I think, thought they won that round. But, uh, you know, I think all three of us agree that Emmanuel Carlos is in front. Uh, you know, West Cap has certainly had his moments, but the majority of the consistency has come from 
Emmanuel Carlo. He coasted a little bit that round. A little, little sharp little there. Yeah. Good combination. Where's Kappa? What a competitor right in there, as you can see. Jabbing and really competitive here tonight. Where's Kappa? He's taken. Even Carlos in the deep water, and that's what Carlos needs if he's going to be an international fighter. Yep, yep. It's a long trip from Western Australia for Kappa, but he's proven his worth against Eman Carlos, the OPBF and Victorian champion, and maybe soon to be IBF Pan Pacific middleweight champion. But we've got one more round to come. John Demacoli has announced it. Respect there, yeah, the way fighters hug. You like to see that Barry sportsmanship. I love it, mate. You know, to see that much respect as they come out for the last round. Been, you know, nine rounds of, of war, really. You know, quality boxing and punching by both fighters. Both fighters have had their moments, but unofficially, we've got Emmanuel Carlos pretty well in front. Yeah, for me, three rounds up, Eman Carlos, but a soccer atmosphere here at MSAC. It's like a World Cup atmosphere, Peter Maniatis. It certainly is, and it's all Eamon Carlos. And right at the moment, if Carlos can win this last round and put an exclamation mark on his performance here tonight, there's some big fights in store. We're talking Tim Zhu, Michael Zorafa, even Jeff Horn. Yeah. No reason why he could not fight Jeff Horn. Yeah, well, I'd like, seriously like to see Jeff Horn go back to welterweight or light middleweight at the most. If he's going to continue, he's, he's not a middleweight. And he was world champion at welterweight. He was 29 as a world champion at welterweight. So he hasn't grown since then in my money. And he should go back to welterweight and literally get hungry again. Good stuff from Wade, uh, from Wes Kappa here. Um, Emmanuel Carlos, you know, probably by his corner, you know, had, they have him pretty well in front too. But Wes Kappa fighting right down to the, right down the stretch. Maybe even a rematch with Dwight Ritchie for him and Carlos. That'd be a good fight, Barry. That, that's a real good fight. That's a really good fight. That's his only loss so far, Emmanuel Carlos, and that could be a could be a good rematch. The big difference in this fight, the first half of the fight, Eman Carlos was a house on fire. Wes Capo sort of drawn it back a little bit. He's had a good second yeah. half of the fight, Barry Michael. He, he has, he has, Jordan. It's a, the second half of the fight's been better. Um, Emmanuel was trying to get him out of there desperately in the first half of the fight and threw many great body punches, but quite a few of them went south of the border, cost him a point, so he's been a bit cautious with the, his body punching since then. But just his boxing ability alone is keeping him in front on our unofficial scorecards here. Let's ride this home. Viewers out there, you've had 10 terrific rounds here to appreciate Emmanuel Carlos and Wes Kappa. Been terrific contests. Both fighters have left no stone unturned and left everything inside the ring. The winner will get a top 15. IBF World Ranking and the IBF Pan Pack around their waist. And right at the moment, Wes Cap has been gallant, but I don't think he's got the biscuits, Barry. He's had, I tell you what, he's been having a pretty good round this round. He's landed some real good shots. Not a lot in this round at all. Coming inside 30 seconds of the 10th and final round. Emmanuel trying to land the big bomb. Wes Kappa taking anything. Good shot, good shot again by Wes Kappa. Nice counter in right hand. Bombs being exchanged. 13 seconds remaining round. 10th and final round. Emmanuel Carlos. Here we go. Emmanuel Carlos puts a hand up and says, it's my night, it's my town, and it's going to be my belt. And he finishes with a flurry. And I yes. think Eman Carlos will be crowned the IBF Pan Pacific champion and get the top 15 world ranking and put a lot of middleweights on notice, Barry Michael. He certainly put everyone on notice in the middleweight division. A quality performance by Emmanuel Carlos. He moves, he's matured to another level uh, on our unofficial scorecards. Uh, an impressive victory by Emmanuel Carlos. Here we go, West the Cap flurry. Valiant right to the end. And these 10 rounds that Eamon Carlos has got in the bank, invaluable. You can't put a price on them. For sure. Jordan, how did you see it? Yeah, for me, I think Eman's probably done enough in terms of uh, winning by three rounds. He was like a thoroughbred, starting like a house on fire. And then Wes Kappa had too much ground to sort of make up. He was like Shataka. Shataka needed the quick finish, but really couldn't get there. And Eman Carlos will be the new IBF Pan Pacific middleweight champion. Certainly very confident at the end there. This is brought to you by Ultra Tune, Kings of Combat, 10 year anniversary, and also Toy Box up in Surfers Paradise Avenue. Get up there for a nice drink, kick your heels back, and relax at Toy Box.
John Di Macaulay and Ben Kilty now inside the ring. They know the scorecards. Ben Kilty's got the belt. Let's wait and see what happens here tonight. Before we go to the judges' scorecards, Melbourne, please make some noise for both of your main event fighters, Wes Tepper, Emmanuel Carlos. What an epic main event we have witnessed here at Kings of Combat 25. As we're joined by Ben Kilty, the supervisor of the IBS. After 10 rounds of boxing, We've gone to the judges' scorecards. We have a split point decision. Your first judge for the contest, 95-94, Kappa. Your second judge for the contest, 96-93, Carlos. Your third judge scored the contest, 96-93, declaring you in a via split points decision and new IBF Pan Pacific Champion Red Corner Emmanuel Carlos gets a victory how sweet is Carlos. that a split decision he goes to his knees and he prays Special victory there for Eman Carlos, crowned the new IBF Pan Pacific Champion. He jumps into the world rankings. Barry Michael, what a performance. Great performance from Emmanuel Carlos. I'm not sure what judge gave it to Wes Kappa. Wes Kappa certainly had his moments, and it was a great fight, a very competitive fight. But Emmanuel Carlos, to my money, went to another level. Wes Kappa, here we come. Guys, I don't have a word with both fighters. I just want to say something, everyone. Please put your hands together for this epic main event. Wes Kappa, he's iconic. Kickboxing, boxing, MMA, you, you name it, he's done it. He's never been stopped in 24 fights. To me, it was a dream to have him on the show. I really appreciate you guys coming down. We cheer Lacey, we'll get you back. I promised Wes, win, lose or draw, we're gonna get you back as well, okay? Wes, we'll have a quick word, mate. What an absolutely cracking main event. I'm sure the crowd who they don't know, you've never been stopped in your entire career, only had three losses. Mate, you're a, an amazing campaigner. It's great to have you down in Melbourne. And what a tough fight. You didn't get the Chockeys tonight, but um, you've done amazingly well, mate. You won over a lot of the crowd here in Melbourne. Oh, thanks for having me on. Hisham, been nothing but a gentleman since I've been uh, dealing with him for this fight. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Unfortunately, didn't get away with the cheese. Thought I did enough, but I suppose in his hometown, I've got to come a little bit more, but Anyway, it is what it is, man. Back on the horse. I'll, uh, this won't be the last time you see me. If you share, won't have me back in December. I'd love to come back and have another swing. I want you back. I want you back. It'd be fantastic to come back. Like you said, I've, I've switched and changed between three different disciplines. I'm, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just keep doing that, I suppose. I, I'm having fun, enjoying it. Thank you for everyone that came across from Perth. Thank you to my sister and her boyfriend and Ross and Lindsay and... Corey, you big ugly bastard, and my missus, thank you very much. I get to go home to my very beautiful four-month-old daughter now. I'm very, very happy to go home now. I've got my health intact. I'm still somewhat handsome, I think. At least mum thinks so. Um, can, I, can I ask a question? Will you kick again? Ah, oh, fuck, I, I hate kicking now. I, I love boxing, you're a legend at kickboxing. Look, if, you're a legend at boxing, will you kick again? That's all I want to know. Let's have a think about it. Yeah. Back away. The, sh so, the shins are a bit too weak these days, man. I don't know. But, oh, look, never say never. I haven't kicked for a while, but I'll have to lubricate the hits up a little bit more before I start trying to kick again. Um, yeah, never say never if the fight's right and, and it makes sense. Ah, oh, shit, why not? I'll, I'll, give, it a, I'll give it a crack. Um, yeah, so, hey, look, everyone, thanks for having me out. It's been a pleasure. You've been nothing but a great... I love coming to Melbourne. Um, thanks to the IBF. Thanks to Ben. Thanks to Hisham. been nothing but... A thanks to Lacey and Weechi and Cleary. All them boys helped me in my corner. All the sparring partners. Thanks to all my sponsors. You've been legends. I'll see you again. Take care. God bless. Always entertaining and centering the one and only. Where's the captivator, Kappa?
We're going to go over and talk to our victor here today, Emmanuel Eman Carlos. Wow! I've been lucky enough to watch you grow in your career today. Mate, you look sharper than ever, stronger than ever, and better than ever. Congratulations, the IBF Pan Pacific title around your waist. How you feeling, brother? Firstly, I would like to thank Wes Kepler. I've been a massive fan for him for a long time. It was just such a tough fight. He, he's here, always here, and he wants to fight. I'm a big fan of his fighting style, and I'm a big fan of his dance moves. Thank you very much, Wes Kepler. You're the man, thank you very much. I must say, last night at the weigh-in, you guys got a bit close in the weigh-in in your, in your stare-off. Wasn't it wasn't your normal um, stare-down at the weigh-in? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, there was a few kisses involved. Uh, a bit of bromance, but it's all good. <laughs> well, yes, well, and today is let your fist do the talking. It was, a, it was a great fight, man. Mate, what a great fight. When you step into the ring with a guy like Wes Kapp, with such a history behind him, this guy's fought the who's who. He's fought Sam Solomon. He's gone overseas. He's fought the whole world. And today... He fights a young E-man, a young hungry E-man, Carlos, and um, man, you got the win. Like I said before, he's always keen to fight. I've seen him, he's had heaps of Muay Thai, kickboxing, MMA fights. He just loves a good scrap, and tonight I hope everyone enjoyed their night. It was a tough one. Once again, thanks, Wes Kappa. Mate, anyone you want to thank before we wrap it up tonight? Man, I'd like to thank everyone for coming down, man. The support, the support has been phenomenal. Well, I had to just hear the crowd just motivate me to push harder and harder. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming down. I, I, right now, sharing this moment with everyone has, absolutely means a lot. And this is something that I'll cherish forever. So thank you very much, everyone. One last question with this, the great management team behind you. What is next? What would you see in your future? Who do you want to call out, perhaps, for the 2020? Man, I, I don't call out anyone. If they want to fight me, they can call me out. Um, but, man, yeah, I'd just like to thank, you know, my corner, John Bowman, Chop, Shuey, my dad, man, he's always been there from, you know, if you know me, you know my old man. I'd like to thank Beck, Razor, um, my family, all, the, all my friends that come, you know, they, um, they're always there from, um, from day one, always supporting me. I can't thank you guys enough. I'd like to thank my beautiful girlfriend. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her, honestly. And I'd like to wish... My mom, a happy birthday. She gave her Nyla today. I love her so much. Until this day, I'll always be my mama's boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your new IBF Pan Pacific champion, Emmanuel Eman Carlos. Emmanuel Eman Carlos. Barry, it's been a terrific night of fights. 10 year anniversary of Kings of Combat. Jordan Pellerini, ultra tune. Yeah, it did a great night. 11 great fights. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the entire team at Shamrock Promotions, what a night it's been, the 10th anniversary, Kings of Combat 25. Congratulations to all of our winners. Eman Carlos on his IBF Pan Pacific title. Until December 7th, stay safe. My name is John Zimacoli, and we'll see you right back here in the Kings of Combat ring. Thank you.